Well, welcome and hello, motherfuckers, to the Clock and Talk, an Arsenal fucking podcast. Yes, that's right, we're back. We've had a little break, international break, and that little cackle and laugh you can hear is Darren. How are you, buddy? Yes, this, I said you should host again. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, it's been an absolute shit fight. Um, uh, anyone who watched that Southampton game, but that's why we're here. We're here to get in and talk about Southampton and talk about the Arsenal and who's Emery out and who's Emery in, and there could be blood, there could be laughs, there could be tears. Who knows, lads? So, anyway, um, each and every week, and hey, look, he's always here. Resident. Is it resident? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's part of the team. Tony, how are you, buddy? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm just like that old piece of furniture in the corner. I always turn up. <laughs> uh, always there. But, yeah, I mean, could be could be better a feeling about football, but life and everything's going okay, so... Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, for those in Australia, we had to get up at uh, 2 a.m. in the morning to to watch that Arsenal game. But, yeah, so I feel for you lads getting up at 2 a.m. and watching that absolute crap. But I waited till about 6 a.m. and watched the replay. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, boys, let's get into it. Uh, we had the international break. Just before we get into that game, I just – look, I, I, I have not looked at the Twitter questions. I haven't looked at what's going on in the WhatsApp group too much. I, I think there's a quite a few through. So I'll – if I – if we have touched on it earlier, then – Darren will, Tony will just skip through it and uh, if we've talked about it already. So, um, but I just want to touch on Mourinho, Tony. He's back. Uh, Tottenham Hotspurs. There's a lot of Arsenal fans having a sook that that Arsenal are pretty much, you know, we're, we're not a we're not a club with big ambitions anymore. Um, your thoughts on that appointment? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it massively pleases Darren because it <laughs> yes, it, it does. Takes him to, to them, <laughs> Um, yeah, look, I mean, as I said, I would have taken him. I always said he wasn't my first choice. I think most people are more upset that they've done something about it. And we feel like we're in a worse position than them, that they've done something about it and we've done nothing. And then, so I don't know if it's people particularly pissed off that we've missed out on Mourinho, so to speak, but it's just that they seem to be dealing with an issue and we seem to be turning our back on our issue and just pretending it isn't happening. Uh, I don't know if it's a good appointment for them. I'm not sure it's a great fit, um, but time will tell. Mm-hmm. Um, Darren, and, and obviously you were very happy with this appointment. I just couldn't believe... He, he wasn't coming to Arsenal. I couldn't <laughs> believe how many Arsenal fans had got that low, that down, that they have given up that much that they wanted that cunt to come to our club. It is perfect symmetry now. They call their ground the toilet bowl and now a big piece of shit has fallen right down the middle of it. It is perfect. <laughs> Honestly, the world has got a better place. There's symmetry. It feels good. Global warming will end. Uh, the ice caps will stop melting. The world is perfect again. Tottenham have got a cunt in charge. <laughs> okay. Um, so you're a very happy chappy. Um, we won't touch too much on Emery and stuff. We'll get into this game and we'll probably, you know, we'll, it'll probably be questions and things on Emery out later. So, okay, uh, Southampton Arsenal, if you didn't watch it, um, the, the result was 2-2. Uh, Tony, line-up came out, mate. Your thoughts when that came out? Why are we playing a back five against Southampton? That was... Mm. I, I couldn't particularly disagree with the players, but... Why are we playing a back five at home to Southampton? Why is our biggest ever sign-in who looked bright three games ago been dropped ever since and can't get a look in? It just, it's just absolutely baffling. It, I was driving home last night and I can't, it was Darren Bent was on the radio, uh, ex-Tottenham Villa and about 10 other clubs. Um, and he was saying it just looks like, and I agree with him, it just looks like Emery's trying a different thing every week in the hope that he finds something that works and then he can stick with it because there's no logical reason that you'd go, Oh, let's go five at the back at home to Southampton. And, and that, that was it. I, I got beyond even looking at what players are on the pitch. As soon as I saw it was a back five, I was just like, why, why are you doing this? Especially when you've got, you know, obviously Lacazette, Ozil and Bemming up top and yeah, just it's very weird, very weird formation. Uh, Darren, your thoughts, Mike? Yeah, not too dissimilar from Tony. I mean, I quite like playing a back five at some stages when you've got two good fullbacks, and we have. 
Uh, but it does seem a little bit strange when I mean, so you you you're then playing three at the back, and the idea is you've got these attacking um, fullbacks. So in theory, I can see why he was trying it. I agree. It just feels like he's trying something new. But when there's no Pepe in the side and Chambers is in the side, and that's no disrespect to Chambers, I like the effort he puts in, but that's not the the best option. So it just just felt wrong. And, I mean, we'll get into the game, but because they were so much better than us, it meant that our full-backs couldn't become wing-backs. They weren't playing in midfield, they were playing in defence, and we were under the cost for pretty much 90 minutes. It's terrible. Yeah, no, it was. And look, uh, Southampton fans, I know you're not listening to an Arsenal podcast, but I hold your head up high because it was a game I feel that you probably deserve to win and you're probably happy with a 1-1 result. I think they haven't, haven't taken a point for a few games either. So, um, Tony, eight minutes into it, mate, and Southampton are on the board. That was <laughs> to go through that, mate. <laughs> Just the most ridiculous defending ever. One, look, we didn't deserve to get anything out of the game, so I feel kind of stupid moaning about rules. But the ball was moving when they took the free kick. Why? The VAR is pointless if it's not going to... I know it can't look at that as part of what it's here for. It can't look at restarts. But what is the point in it? Like That is something so major. It plays such a major part in the goal, and it can't look at it. But... Our defending is atrocious, and, and whether the ball's moving or not, we have to be better. I mean, I think they took about four touches before David Luiz even turned to look and saw the ball in the area. But And he's getting the most stick because he wasn't looking, but no one reacted. It wasn't like everyone else spread back and David Luiz was a one quarter out of position. All five to seven players in there, and they showed a graphic on Match of the Day last night. Even Emery was on the touchline appealing the decision. Five or six players were appealing the decision, and, and in the meantime, Southampton have ran in and scored. It's just such amateur defending. Also, I mean, Bertrand's quite clever to pick the ball up and run round Bellerin with it. But one of the first things you're taught as a kid when you're defending is stand on the fucking ball. Even if, like, even if you're on a booking, I know most managers will say stand on the ball. They're not because you're not kicking it away unless you're there for 20 seconds. The rest will never do anything about it. We're, we're seven minutes into the game or whatever it was. Nil nil. The ball's basically at Bellerin's feet. Just stand on it. And if Bertrand tries to pick it up and run around, you just block him off and act like you didn't hear the whistle. You won't get a booking for that. And and even if you did, so fucking what? It's just silly. Yeah, it's very piss poor form. Uh, Darren, I'll, I'll go to you on this one as well, mate, because you well, probably just, might have something to say. It was no, it was just against the run of play. It, it, it was with the run of play. You know, they did serve a goal. It was. I agree again. Everything was as Tony says. We're just childish. Every, everyone's so lacking in confidence now. Nobody knows where to do. They're all so scared to play football. It's got to a stage where. Uh, you know, you almost don't know the way out. It was a very strange atmosphere there yesterday. I mean, Southampton were really good at running the clock down. They were really good at managing the referee, managing the time. But we didn't, you know, the crowd, it, didn't you find it, Tony? All the way through that, we were we were resigned to that sort of game. There was no hope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I said to, I was talking earlier in, in the group chat, and I, I was in club level yesterday, and things always are a little bit different up there. But it just felt like no one, I, I don't know if... I don't know if passion is the right word or it just felt like the crowd were completely disconnected from it. And it seemed like that was the whole ground. And I thought, I thought it wasn't just club level, but I thought maybe it could have been, but everyone else I spoke to, my friend took my ticket in, in the West stand and he said exactly the same. Cause even, uh, even like with our second goal, no one really celebrated. Yeah. And I know you shouldn't be celebrating the draw, but you've got a 96 minute equalizer. I don't think I've ever been the time where that hasn't been celebrated. But yesterday, it was like even the players didn't give a fuck. It was just like, oh, yeah, goal, we scored. Yeah, was it? It's like a ninth in a 9 nil win where you're just like, oh, yeah, goal. Sort of, we've seen loads of them. Yeah, there was a real feeling of resignation around the ground. And we all go there with a bit of hope that this is going to be the turn in ploy and we're, we're, we're playing someone who were really terrible in the bottom three and we might be able to notch up a few goals. And yet, from the first couple of minutes, there was a resignation. Oh, no, we're going to see the same as we've seen all season. We aren't going to be any better. This is going to be a long afternoon. And you're right, when that last goal went in, you know, Lacazette didn't celebrate. The, the crowd were disconnected. And yet everyone had stayed. It was unusual because, you know, enough people leave there with 10 minutes to go. And, and everyone seemed to stay. It was like watching a car crash. It was like we were, you know, we were all rubbernecking, watching a disaster evolve, uh, you know, evolve in front of us. It was a really strange day. So I, w- I was in the, oh, I was I the other end. I was at the, in the clock end. And, and we've seen Lacazette score. And then 
like there was no real celebration. And we wondered, was there some, like, I looked, the flag wasn't up. And I thought, was there something so obviously wrong with it that he knows it's going to get disallowed? That that was how the celebration was. Yeah, it was just agreed. like, oh, this isn't going to get this guy. Like he knew he'd handballed it or something. Tony, it was a, it was at my end, and you know it was really close. And we were all not sure whether to celebrate because the players didn't celebrate. Yeah. You know, normally you're running for the ball and you're running there. I mean, it was late. There wasn't chance for an, another one. But you're normally running to try and get the ball. And like I said, didn't even put his arms up. And he just stood there. It was a very yeah. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. So from from a distance, I mean, you, you're a lot closer than I was. But from a distance, I thought. Oh, he must know it's going to get disallowed. Yeah. Like something's gone wrong. Yeah, all of us, all of us, the same time. It was strange. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was the atmosphere in the ground, and for those who got a bit lost, you boys are talking about the last goal in the ninetieth minute. So. Well, it wasn't much in between uh, to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but I was just going to go back on the, that first goal that Southampton scored. And look, we're, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to dwell too much on the the match, but that. At that point, I thought, hello, here we go. I don't know if any of you boys got the vibe in the stadium because you, you're both there. But did any of you feel at some point during the game or even after that first, go- that first goal of Southampton that Emery's lost the dressing room? Their heads were down. The energy wasn't there. And I thought, they're not even trying here. Like, that just – it was so amateur – after that first goal of Southampton, that was what I what I felt like in my lounge room. Until then, I see Lacazette score the first, you know, Arsenal's first goal in the eighteenth minute, and I thought, hello, maybe I've read too much into this." Tony, uh, I, I don't. Again, I, I don't want to say lost the dressing room as much as I really don't like Emery. I just feel like the players don't know what they're doing. And, and I was, Aaron's point earlier about the wing backs are supposed to be attacking, but we played more like a back five. And I think the players, because they played a back five, a proper back five last time out against Leicester, I think the players have just thought, oh, well, that's how we're playing. But it was somehow supposed to be different this week and they were meant to be more attacking outlets than defensive. So I, I, don't, I just think they're completely confused. Like, they, they don't know what they're doing one day to the next. Training must be a nightmare because mm. they can't, like, it must be, they're doing, they're doing completely different things every week because they're playing in different formations and different roles, even if they're playing in the same position. Like, Bellerin played right wing back two games in a row, but they've been, well, he's supposed to do two completely different jobs. You can't train like that, especially with an international break in between. It's just, mm-hmm. you just can't be done. Like, train at what you're good at and how you're going to play, not change every week. There's no schedule. There's no rhythm. There's no routine. And I don't even, even with the goal, like the, it didn't make me think, oh, yeah, they're really playing for him. I think some things like that happen because you have good players. I mean, Tierney won it one time, well, probably the only time he got forward successfully, picked out a great ball to Aubameyang. His shot's blocked and Lacazette scores. But I don't think that's them suddenly trying. I think it is just when you have good players, occasionally good things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. Darren, you agree with that? Or do you feel that Emery's... Uh, I know you were a supporter of Emery and you were happy to wait till Christmas, but are you are you now thinking, oh, shit, if he's lost the dressing room or, or if he's, you know, players aren't performing to what he wants because they're confused, are you thinking, you know, it's time to close the curtain on this? Well, I think, you know, we're all on that... We've all joined that ship. You know, I, 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 it wasn't so much I was a supporter of Emery. If you listen to all I've said is that I've been like with the club stance is we've got a new manager. We don't want to make rash decisions. Let's give him 18 months. Let's, he's got a whole new change of squad. You know, it's going to take some time. Um, but we're now, you know, we, we've had a, a run of six or seven games that we should be winning. And we haven't, you know, taken a single victory. Uh, and it's got to a stage now where it's 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 almost gone too far. Is we're <clears throat> we're actually getting so far away from a top four position in the league, um, and 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 I think that was that's where the players are. I don't I don't know if you call it lost a dressing room. I agree. They look confused. They they are so lacking in confidence. The the first option is not to give the ball away, so they give it backwards. And it's and all of them. You know, there's mm. there's no swagger there. We have extremely good strikers. Lacazette and, um, and you know Bamiyang are fabulous players, which is why we're still sort of where we are in the table. It's where why we've still been there or thereabouts because we have got good enough players to score goals. But it's because they're good. It's not because we're playing well. It's a strange place. Mm-hmm. What about you? Tess? No, it is. It is. I agree. Ah, oh, look, I agree, mate. It's it's very odd, and and you know, obviously, I'm not at the ground where you guys, so I'm not getting the atmosphere 
uh, all the vibe that you guys have through the ground, you know. Um, but, you know, sitting in my room and in my lounge room watching it on TV, I am absolutely fucking very disappointed. <laughs> um, I just uh, – people say – and it's really pissing me off lately. People are saying, and, and look, everyone's entitled to their opinion. That's why we're here doing this podcast. But people keep saying, I can't support Arsenal. I have to look for a new team. Like, grow some fucking balls, okay? You're going to, you, you, you know, what do you want? To be in t- on, on top of the ladder week in, week out, every week, every season? Of course we want to be. But we've got to be there to support Arsenal when times are tough. And at the moment, we're going through a real rough, rough patch. Um, it's been six six games, you said, Darren. So uh, we're, we haven't taken many points, but, like, games we should have won. But for fuck's sake, always support your club and always support the team you, you, you know, you chose to follow for whatever reason you did. Don't don't turn your back on that. Don't Don't turn your back on that. Have your opinion on players. Have your opinion on the manager. That's fine for me. But don't, don't ever tell me that I'm fucking not supporting Arsenal and I'm going for a new – I'm looking for a new club because, mate, go and give yourself a fucking uppercut, you queer cunt. Um, <laughs> that fucking shits me, mate. And I've seen a lot of it. And, and look, you boys, you know, in a few circles where I know a lot of Spurs fans, mate, they are absolutely fucking spewing and saying they will not support Tottenham Why why Mourinho is there. And I, I feel like getting your fucking head and smashing it against the brick wall. Well, don't support football then. You're, you're a fucking tool. So I get people's frustration, guys, but you've just got to keep your head up, keep supporting your club, and hopefully things will get better sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think Spurs um, fans will really yeah. take to Mourinho if he, uh, if he gives them some success. I mean, that is a club that haven't won anything. All right, we all discount the League Cup. You know, that's their last trophy in 2008. You know, I'm fucking old. I mean, my mid 50s, I've never seen Tottenham win the league. You know, I mean, they've, they've mm. done fuck all. Mourinho wins them a couple, a couple of trophies, they will love him. It's Mate, he match. wins them one trophy, they'll fucking love him. <laughs> it's a match made yeah, in heaven. Come on. <laughs> I don't even care <laughs> if they're successful. It's like going to see a really good movie, you know. You just, I just want to watch it unfold. It's going to be great. He's a cunt. <laughs> and he's. But, but, Cool. But this shit with, you know, this shit with the fucking, uh, not, you know, I'm not supporting my team no more. That just, it just leaves poor taste. It really does. Yeah. Look, I mean, I mm. think, you know, the, the, the thought of changing side for me, Tony, it just doesn't work. But I understand having lived overseas um, that there's, there's supporters that have, are supporting them and maybe not the same reasons or I haven't found the same reason that first love that you have for the club and people change I find it amazing yeah, it's just something we can't talk about but I can understand how miserable everyone is it was that at the, at the game on Sunday we're all turning up not looking forward to it it's, it's going to happen again and again and again I, I want to you boys both go to the games um, I don't know how many you, anyway you just go to the stadiums I, I don't know whether some podcasters and no disrespect to any of the people who do Arsenal podcasts like ourselves. But there's a bit of a movement running around from what I feel and heard on the few of the Arsenal podcasts that, you know, the go is, and I'll go to you, Tony, the go is um, let's boycott the grounds, let's boycott the stadiums, let's boycott this, this and the other. And I thought, well, I remember you saying once before that the, the, the seats have already pretty much sold. And I thought about it afterwards, and I thought that even though people have their season ticket, right, regardless you go or not, you've already paid, I don't know what the percentage of, but what what tourists are also coming in. Like, if I'm going over to England for a holiday, well, I'm going to go and see Arsenal, and I'm not going to go, oh, let's boycott today because I hate the fucking manager. So I don't know whether they were, and like I said, no disrespect to any other podcasters out there, but there was a lot of people saying that let's get this movement happening. I think the, one of the only things that really, really pisses me off when other people talk about Arsenal is someone that lives 10 million miles away, hasn't spent a penny, and then criticises me for going and not boycotting. I've had this argument so many times. If you want me to boycott, send me the money for the ticket. And you say that to them and they go, oh, no, no, but you're doing it for the best of the team. Oh, so when it's coming out of my pocket, it's fine. But when it's coming out of yours, you don't want to do it. It's funny that. 
it re- that really pisses me off. But, like especially when people start criticizing you for it. Oh, you're not a proper fan. You don't boycott. Like, fuck off. Um, but th- look, I think there's probably in the average game there's I think there's about five thousand tickets to non-season ticket holders. Maybe a bit more. Um, obviously, you've then got the away fans, okay. including the away fans. So. Yep. It's about 5,000 tickets taken up. The club couldn't care less if the ground's empty. In olden days, it it really mattered. Now everything's out contracted. All the catering's already contracted out. So when people say, like, boycott beer, doesn't make a blind bit of difference. They've sold that contract for 10 years to whatever company. Mm. And they've literally just signed a new one with Camden Hells Lager. So it doesn't make a blind bit of difference. There's Before it was seen as... And I spoke about this on the podcast a few weeks ago. I'm not sure if you was on it. But... Before the Premier League as a product was seen as where the grounds were full and and like the crowd was so passionate. I don't know what it is, and it's something that, that worries me that Premier League grounds, not just us, are just not full anymore. And there's no reason for it. Like before you say, oh, it was a really cold day, it was minus six, or it was a stupid kickoff time. But now it doesn't seem to matter. You can have a team, say City, they're doing really well, they've got a three o'clock kickoff in a decent game at home, and they're still 10 or 20% percent of the seats are empty. The, the product has got mm. so big now that it doesn't rely on fans anymore the way it used to. So they're still getting the money. There's just no... I, I, look, I'm not going to boycott anyway, to be honest, but I, I honestly don't believe it would make a difference if we did. And then you get, you, you know, you take your sponsorships money, your TV money, your, 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 the club, like... Uh, it may yeah, hurt them in the heart, the vast, but it's not going to hurt them in the wallet. Well, as a, as well, the vast amount of their money comes from the TV deals. So, and that's obviously because the TV companies get viewers. So the people saying to me, oh, you should boycott so it looks bad. Well, if all of you cunts didn't watch it on TV and the company's viewing figures for a game, because I think the, I know Sky, so just in England, they pay around £7 million a game. And obviously they get it back in advertising and stuff. And that's just for the rights of the game. Then they have to pay their presenters and their cameramen and all, and all that shit. But mm. And then you've got match of the day and blah, blah, blah. But say they pay seven million a game. And if their, their viewing figure is only 100,000, then they're, they're suddenly going to have to think about it. But all these people want to see from is, oh, yeah, don't go to the games and boycott the games, give up your money. Oh, if you really want to boycott, don't watch it on TV. And, and get everyone you know to not watch it on TV. And then if that carries on, then you've got half a chance. That'll hurt them in the pocket a lot more than than what a, a fan not going to the game would. Again, it's never going to happen because people still will watch it on TV. The only thing mm-hmm. is they, people can say, they can go on Twitter and say, well, I didn't watch it. And no one can prove that. Whereas in the ground, if every all 60,000 people said, oh, I didn't go, and you watch it on TV, you can see there's people there. So mm-hmm. it's very easy to claim something when no one can prove you wrong. Darren, your thoughts on this 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 movement of boycotting and 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 I'll go to another one as well. There's another that the bloody hashtag that's running around. Um, we care. Do you do you, do you think these things, as fans, uh, you know, we're fans. We have got our right. You know, everyone's got their uh, rights to an opinion and stuff. But is it? Where does it stop? Like you know, we're, we're not running the club. We're not. You know, uh, where does it where does it go and what's it lead to, mate? Yeah, I think this We Care Do You is, is just a little embarrassing. You know, a lot of uh, good podcasts, a lot of good people using their influence to try and change things. But the, the, the sort of proposal they put together, the letter they sent to the club, was just an embarrassing, was like a Liberal Democrat manifesto. It was just trying to please everyone and say too much and deliver absolutely nothing. And it happened that in the next two weeks we spent about £80 million. Uh, and people thought that it had something to do with that, which I'm sure it didn't. Um, I, I'm like Tony, I won't boycott. It's my enjoyment. It's what I love. It's what I do. I'm Arsenal. I go and watch Arsenal. You know, it's uh, it's been my Saturday afternoons wherever I've been in the world. If I'm if I can't go to the game, I'm in front of a uh, a radio, in front of a television, in front of a, an iPad. Um, um, mm-hmm. not, uh, wherever you can get plans. it. Yeah. Um, and my, I've yeah. said this many times. I think the problem is the demographic of supporters at Arsenal now is 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 forty plus. There's people who have, will spend a thousand pound for a season ticket at the start of the year, and if, if on a Wednesday coming up to Christmas they've got a better offer than going to Arsenal which let's be fair a lot of things are better than going to Arsenal at the moment they just won't bother going they don't need to sell their ticket it's 40 but quid. Darren do you not find like I, I would have agreed with that two years ago but now as I said like Saturday 3 o'clock and you've got people not there I think time used to be an excuse but now it seems like 
it doesn't really matter. No, I think, just, I think there's just better things to do, Tony, than go and watch Arsenal. I just, yeah, yeah, no, I was just saying that you said like a Wednesday night, which used to be the case, but now I just think people are finding better things to do. Yeah, on a Saturday that, afternoon. My, you yeah. know, the, the, I had family down from Liverpool this weekend, two big football fans, <laughs> Liverpool fans, I had, could have had a great weekend with family. You know, I left them to, to travel on a train into London to go and watch Arsenal, you know, six hours of my life before I see him again. I'm not going to get back. Uh, I'm, that's me. But a lot of, a lot of people in my position would have said, oh, it's, it's Southampton, I'm not bothering. It's shit. You know, and it is shit. It's not fun at the moment. Um, and the demographic, I say, is old, generally wealthy men who can afford a £1,000 a year and it don't matter to them if every now and again they miss, you know, they, they waste their 50 quid and don't bother going. Mm-hmm. Are these the guys, uh, they're not really the ones complaining though, are they? It's, it's, it seems to be, and then uh, I've got to be very fucking carefully, but <laughs> it seems to be that the fans who don't live and go to the games, who seem to do a lot of the whinging and moaning on the back of uh, Robbie and the boys on Arsenal Fan TV, what they see on YouTube, and it just seems to pick up a lot from that, or is it, or is it the match day going fans? Uh, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like Twitter is a, a lot of people from abroad, and look, they have every right to an opinion as long as they're not telling me what to do. Their opinion is is exactly as good as mine, no better, no worse. So I, I can't complain about that. The only thing that gets me is when when and obviously it's not all people start telling me or other fans to boycott. Um, it's not really the match going fans are complaining but as Darren said the match going fans are the one that are choosing not to go and, and not sell their seat so they've got nothing really to moan about if they choose not to go they just choose not to go and how can they moan they've had something better to do and if yeah. they didn't pay for their season ticket at the start of the year they wouldn't pay for it mm-hmm. no okay uh, so that was interesting I just thought I'll go down that little path for a minute but I'll try and steer this shit back into this event the game as sad as it is um Look, basically, yeah, as I said before, it finished 2-2. Uh, Tony, we'll touch quickly on the penalty. Um, and you boys touched on the Lacazette goal. And if you want to, you know, we can talk about subs and things. And then we'll do our 3-2-1. So, yeah, mate, 71th minute. Uh, who was it? James Ward. James what else? Yeah, yeah uh, penalty. Yeah, it's lazy from Tierney. It's soft, but I'm not surprised it was given. It's one of them that if they gave that every time it had happened, there'd be 18 penalties a game. And it seems to be it's gone against us again. But I can't argue because it is a foul. Um, it's lazy. Uh, he's letting run across him for no reason. And then the one time we fucking save a penalty, it rolls straight toward Kraus who taps it in, which is the way things are going at the moment. <laughs> It was quite interesting after the game. Ward Prowse done it again on Match of the Day. Ward Prowse done an interview. And he said, we know they're lacking in confidence. So we just took the game to him. And he was so, I wouldn't even say, he, he was so like brazen yeah, about can. it. He wasn't, he yeah, wasn't yeah. critical. He wasn't like saying these are shit. But he was just yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. they lack confidence. So we, we made them play and we took the game to them. And it's like, if other teams can see that, why are we not trying to do something about it? Like, mm-hmm. it just, yeah, it's silly. And then, I mean, I don't know Darren's thoughts on that goal before we get on to the next one. I didn't really see it. It was at the far end from me. I, I, yeah, I, you know, it's, they don't show it again on a big screen, which is just another embarrassment of uh, of modern football, where we we the pain public have to go and see the game. Don't get shown the VAR. Don't get shown any replays of any controversial incidents. So it was at the other end of the ground for me. And since I've been back, I haven't brought myself to watch the highlights. So. I've got no idea if it's a penalty <laughs> hey, do, you, or not. do you boys do you boys jump on a um, I don't know like a, 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 a mobile phone and and ask your mates or or or, um, or view it from a t- you know someone streaming something over there or do you just wait until the outcome when it goes to VAR? There, there, there's usually for me someone around me on Twitter like just someone someone around you would likely have Twitter on or they'll check quickly while there's a break in play and or they might have got a text from their mate and then they'll say it to the person next to them and it kind of becomes like Chinese whispers. So you tend to know um pretty quickly. You I wouldn't have seen it like so that Tierney incident, I, it was quite it was right in front of me to be honest. But had I been in my normal seat it would have been the other end and I wouldn't have seen it until match of the day unless something's really controversial then I'll sort of hunt it out and I'll search on Twitter for it 
But if something's yeah. a bit like you're not sure and I can't be bothered, I'm driving home or I'm going for food or whatnot, I won't see it until like the, the standard highlights package, which is like six hours after the game. Yeah, okay. What about you, Darren? You yeah, just run with the Chinese yeah, whispers. It is. It's just like that. If it's if it's that important, but people just didn't care this game. There was so many stoppages for VAR and for. Um, I mean, every time we touched one of their players, they went down holding their head, um, which was a tactic that I think you know the league should have a little look at. I think they must have had five stoppages for head injuries in the second half when there wasn't a single head injury. You know, it was just running the clock down. It was breaking up the momentum of the game, which they didn't need to do because if they'd have just played for. 45 minutes in the second half they'd have beaten us they'd have got four or five <laughs> yeah they would you know mm. it was a stra- yeah. it was uh, I found that the strangest tactics they were running the clock down and yet when we scored that equaliser and there was maybe 20 seconds left it was them who looked like scoring again not us <laughs> do you know yeah that, that mm. shot right at the end yeah. the last touch I thought it was in yeah I was behind that goal yeah, and I thought it was in flicked a little deflection I think didn't it, it was uh, oh. but it was funny like you say that and they were massively wasting time but then just before we've scored, their player had the chance, I think it's Bufal, to run into the corner flag, beat three players and done really well and cut it back and their guy missed a sitter. But you thought, you've been wasting time the whole game and then instead of going to the corner flag, you've run into our area. Like, what are you doing? Well, because that's probably the easiest place to keep the ball, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah, but then he, he's tapped it back to a guy who's had a shot and you just yeah. think, like, their, their tactics seem so, like, one hand was doing one thing and one hand was doing the other and they still they were confused and they still were still battering us he probably looked up and saw into the eyes the doughy eyes of some Arsenal defenders that looked like they were going to get run over by a truck <laughs> I was like, you know, I'd run at them uh, wouldn't you you'd run at those Arsenal defenders at the moment wouldn't you well oh, I would, but not if it was a 95th minute and my players were going down every two seconds <laughs> you can send anyone to run at him, mate. I guess, right, sure. Um, just quickly then, uh, so obviously you boys thought about the Lacazette goals, but, you know, it was, it was a goal, but didn't celebrate. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I will say is Martinelli done well, and no one's really given him any credit for it because of the whole, the way everything went. But mm. as soon as someone actually got direct and went at their defenders, they didn't really like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not too cool. Um, I know we all do sound very disappointed at a 2-2 result. Most teams would be happy to take take one point, but hey, this is Southampton, and look, be honest, we should be going a lot better. Um, well, we should, it's not even that we we should have lost that game convincingly. It's not that, oh, absolutely. That I think if we had if we, if it was a one one and we'd battered them, we were one nil up, and then they scored with the last touch, you'd be disappointed, but not like this. But the thing is, we were hanging on by our fingertips. We need a ninety sixth minute equaliser, and we still should have lost that game three or four one. Mm-hmm. No, we were lucky to walk away with the one point. Absolutely. Um, I just want to ask you quickly. We didn't touch on it before we move on to some questions. Uh, or our three, two, one as well. Um, I walked away from the TV. It must have just been after half time, and Nicholas Pepe came on, and Cullum Chambers went off, and it fucking took me about ten minutes to work out who he'd ta- actually taken off for Nicholas Pepe. Uh, your thoughts on the substitution, Dan? Well, he needed to change to not have five at the back. He needed to... It's funny. So, obviously, you start a game at nil-nil and he thought five at the back was the way to go. And then it's one all at half-time, so the game's still equal. And suddenly, five at the back is not the way to go anymore. It's, he needed to change that was it. My, that, was, that was my point. I was thinking, like, he's, he's come out of five at the back at the start with, but then... Yeah, as you said, like all of a sudden, half time, my shit were down. You know, um, to be honest, I'm change should have, up. <laughs> it, it, not ideal, but he should have done it after five minutes yeah, and, I was just gonna say and that put time. Chambers in midfield. If you don't want to make a sub because you can't drag a player after five minutes, he should have changed it after five minutes and put Chambers in midfield and then nursed it through to half time, and then you can make the sub where it's a bit less embarrassing. But you could see right from the off, it just was not ever going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, does this say to you though and I know this is Emery we are talking about but it sounds like Bella and he, he's got he's got that position uh, locked up over Chambers he, he's definitely got it at wing back I, I would imagine he'll have it as a right back as well but obviously we don't know because he, since he's been back apart, Liverpool was the only game and Liverpool was a real second string team but Liverpool was the only game he's actually played at right back Um when we played right back in uh, in Vitoria, we played a back four, and and Bellerin didn't play. Yeah, oh, I get this. I get the substitution. Don't get me wrong, but I just I, I was looking. I try a lot because Chambers has been pretty good. So it was like, oh, okay. So um, okay, boys, three, two, one. Uh, I know this is going to be very hard, but uh, Tony, 
give us your three, mate. Um, Lacazette, I don't think he played well, but he got two goals. And again, as I always say, if anyone gets both your goals and does nothing, they've still got both your goals. So. Yeah, yeah, it's very hard uh, to disagree against that. But uh, Darren, you're free. Yeah, same black as it. I mean, we've got great players who can do things out of nothing, and he scored two goals out of nothing. You know, it was it was good. Three points for him. There was nobody else really to compete with him. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, I've gone black as it as well for my three. Uh, Tony, your two. Uh, Ozil just looked like he was trying to invent stuff, trying to make stuff happen. I don't again. Don't think he particularly played well. Don't think he particularly made too much happen. But he was actually trying things, and he was again. It, it was he never looked like getting the assist, but it was always the pass before the pass. I think for the first goal, it was him that slid Tierney and down the side. He'd done it a couple of times. I know people are going to take this as oh, you love Ozil, you're saying he's played, he played well. I, I don't think he played well, but that's a measure of the game that I don't think any of our players played well. So the three, two, one are going to be all players that I don't think played well. I <laughs> oh, look just before I go to Darren because I, I will add I I went over for my two as well, but it was I I liked what he was trying to create with Tierney down that side. I just felt there was if if something was going to happen, it was going to happen down that side, um, and Urza was trying to to do little things with Tierney. I think them two might link up pretty well um, down the future as well. So. Um, yeah, that's if Ozil can stay in the team. <laughs> if Emery doesn't have a brain snap and go, that was Ozil's fault. Um, Darren, your two? Yeah, I can't go with you two on Ozil, although I wanted him to play well and I thought a lot of the good stuff that we did came through him. I, I just felt he wasn't on the ball enough and that feels a little bit like we're missing that at the moment. You know, when we've, in, in our teams of the last decade, we've had a go-to player to give the ball to a Fabregas or a Cazorla, um, a Wilshere, somebody who's got close control that can turn either way out of trouble um, to a certain extent we've done it with Xhaka in recent years um, and we just didn't have that and Ozil wasn't there enough Didn't I think I think he touched the ball about six times in the first 20 minutes and I just thought it's not enough so uh, I didn't think he was that good, um, wanted him to be I'm going to give my two points to Pepe I'm sure we'll talk about the uh, the missed chance as soon as he came on. But I thought when Pepe came on, suddenly there was options, suddenly there was life, and suddenly there was a player that you wanted to pay your money to go and see. Mm-hmm. Um, your one point, Tony? I really don't know. I was toying with Pepe, but I thought he was good for about 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Until his confidence <laughs> went. Until his confidence went again. Do you know, suddenly... Yeah. He gets caught in possession, he misses that chance and suddenly, you know, it's he's, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, just on that chance because we didn't speak to it. I've seen loads of people criticising him for, for not shooting. I don't think the shot was the right option. I, I think the pass was the right option, but for some reason he took a little step before which allowed the defender to get back in. If he'd carried on running and passed it, we would have scored. I think, so I, I think the problem I'll, is... I'll scream, and sh- I'll scream and shoot on the two. But I, I was I'll, until I'll, I saw it back. And then I thought the best, the best option was what he'd done, but he just he was sprinting and then he took a little like slow down half step, which allowed the defender to get back in. I think when you're from the angle you had and when you're left footed, your only real option is to go across the goal if you shoot. And then the keeper knows that, so he's already taken half a step and it becomes quite hard to score. I don't think he made the wrong option, I just think he hesitated and I don't know why. Okay, I've got I've got to say something on that if I can, Tess. Um the there's two things really. Firstly, um, I mean I'm at that end I'm the other side from where he was but I'm at that end and I like it when the, you get to that last minute and you actually play a little cross ball and have a tap into an empty net that was when Arsenal were at their best with your Pires and Burkamp and Henri Lundberg they all did that they all took the piss you know when they, were, they looked like they were about to score stroke the ball in the net they'd just cut one square ball um, little dummy and we'd have a tap into an empty net so I like the fact that he's doing that I like the confidence of that but when a player of that ability has broken away and he's fundamentally going to keep coming in one on one, he needs to score. We need to get a goal from that situation, and we didn't. You know, and uh, from my angle, you know, I don't know whether it was the right, and I haven't seen it back. I don't know if it was the right or wrong decision. But when he's got himself into that position, he needs to find a way of scoring, and he didn't. We're talking about Pepe, and obviously that that. Yeah, shoot or not shoot. And look, I, I agree with both your points. Um, however, I just want to touch on, since we are talking about Pepe, has anyone thought about Aubameyang? And there was a couple of chances where 
something's not right with the Ben Meehan at the moment. I, I don't know what it is, but um, was it the first the Lacazette's first goal? You know, when he when he shot, bounced off, and then Lacazette cleaned up the scraps. Yeah, and then I'm sure there was another one or two. Yeah, he missed a good chance well. at one all early in the second half. It was a good save. It wasn't. I wouldn't say it's a bad miss, but I'd expect him to score. I, I didn't think he, he played well yesterday. Um, I think he's probably looked one of the most dejected recently. The, the, it gets masked because he still scores. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, still, I just thought I'd mention him because we did mention Pepe's missed chance, and I'm sure there was a couple for Bamiyang. Yeah, no, there, there was a couple for, for Bamiyang. I mean, it, this still gets to the point that I haven't given a one. But Leno, uh, I probably should have had Leno higher, to be honest. But Leno is my one. Leno gets your one? Okay. Yeah. Um, Darren, your one? Yeah, I couldn't think of one, but maybe that's a good shout. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really, I'd, I've, I've been going through the team. I was tempted to um, give it to Tierney because uh, I saw a lot of criticism for him. Uh, you know, a young kid making his way in a new league. I was, temp- I was tempted for Tierney as well, Darren. You know, I really to be honest, had he not given away the penalty, I probably yeah. would have considered it. Sure, yeah, he, he lost his point mm. with the penalty. I remember thinking that in the game. When I was at the ground, I was thinking, who's me one going to go to for today? Tierney, and then he gives away a fucking penalty. No. Um, yeah, I'll go with Leno as well. Made some good saves. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm really struck. Look, David Luiz, he, he put some nice little balls in. There was one little Bamiyang, and I, you know, I went all oh, nice. But then you know, there's a couple of errors later in the game. Um, Gwen Doozy fucking drives me up the wall at times. Uh, you always, you know, you, you get the attacking options going forward, and he wants to pass it back. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, mate. Tierra, um, he was, he kept busy. Have we got questions. Wrong. Does anyone know? Have we got questions on Torreira? I'm not sure. I've not looked at them at all. I've not been on Twitter. I know, literally, I know of one question we have, which is on Gwenduzi that I wanted to comment on, so I avoided it during the game. Okay. Uh, Just a, if it says, mm. I don't know if you know if we've got anything on Torreira because we should. No, I, I haven't looked, mate. I haven't looked. That I'm still trying to give me one to somebody, and I'm actually, I, I, I think I might go to Torreira, boys. Just to be a little bit different from you boys with Leno, he did nothing right, he did nothing wrong, but, you know, he got the yellow card. I'm just looking at the team, it's so fucking hard. So hard. Bellerin was poor, I thought. Well, Bellerin's just not quite back to, uh, well, we don't know if he's going to ever get back after that serious sort of injury, but he's not back to mm. where he we need him to be. Um, but, of course, he's had the best part of a year out, so we're all going to give him some time oh, yeah, to, nothing, to get back nothing, to it. You know? But, no, he isn't yeah. back to his best at all. He's, uh, he's sluggish. He's, he's lost that yard of pace at the moment. Um, he's not making those lung-busting runs forward, which is his trademark. Uh, we're, we're, we all dreamed of that partnership, I think, of a fully fit Bellerin and a Pepe on that, that right-hand side. And Pepe can't get in this fucking shit team at the moment. You know, so it's all a bit weird. Actually, yeah, I forgot about it. Look, I'll give Pepe my one. I'll go to Pepe for me one, because yeah. you're right, Darren. When he did come on and they changed it up, it was too. Yeah. I, I, it should obviously we all know it should have happened to start with, but yeah, it was. Things did change when he came on, so he'll get my one. Um, okay, where are we going now, Tony? You gonna do some questions? Um, yeah. I've we'll been uh, some questions. promoted yep. a question reader this week. So uh, after like two and a half years on the podcast, I've got a bunch of plays out of zero. Uh, you're glad to hear. And, so you get them questions in at, uh, on our Twitter at cockin underscore talk. Um, we also have a little WhatsApp group where a few questions come through as well. So just shout out if you want that that link for that one. I oh, Just quickly, boys, before the 3 two, one did anyone, any of you see – was the blog up, the ratings? Yeah, I didn't see it. Okay. Um, did you have a look at it, Tony, or not yet? Yeah, I, I read it, and I think he was a lot like us and didn't know who to give anything to, just by this only just by reading it. So yep. you kind of, there was a lot of sixes and 6.5s, which I think were probably a bit generous, but everyone was sort of within one point of each other. So I think everyone was between 5.5 and 6.5. And it's just like you don't know how to rate anyone after that. That's what it looked yeah. like. I looked at him for yeah, that's probably sort of what I would do because I ain't got a clue. It was hard, yeah. I'm just on foot mob. Just had a quick look there because um, I was too lazy. Yeah, who scored? 
Uh, Lacazette got the 8.7, according to them. They give Torreira 7.1. Guendouzi an 8.1. Shit. I wonder where the fuck that worked, anyway. Um, Leno a 7.2. Abemiang a 5.8. So, yeah. Okay. Go for it, Tone. Yep. So, first one is Hakon Larson. Uh, the longer this goes on, the worse it will be. I can't figure out why the club don't sack him. This is hurting us so bad. There is no point giving him time. There is no point keeping him. The only thing that matters is to fuck him off far, far away. Tell me why he's still here. <laughs> Go on, Darren. Uh, well, you know, I, I see that the club made their statement of, well, what, two weeks ago, backing him, giving him that vote of confidence. Because it, at the time, unless they've got somebody ready to replace him, there's um, there's, there's nothing else they can say. They can't say he's a cunt, but we don't know who we're going to get next. Uh, I really do think that they will be looking at it very seriously now. I'm sure... I think in an ideal world, they would have liked us to have had some success this year, get back in the top four, um, maybe get Lundberg ready for the end of the season or the end of the following season. Uh, and now they've got this problem because we're, we're, we're so bad at the moment. Um, there's so, such a lack of confidence in the team that we're really in danger of being so adrift of that fourth space that, that we're going to be a year behind our, our plans and, and you know this, this plan of putting Lundberg in. See, if they put him in now, it's sort of like, is that going to make the difference? Is he good enough? Is he ready? Um, so I just think they're now seriously looking at it. I, th- uh, I thought it would happen in the international break. I'm sure after the performance yesterday, they are meeting and thinking, fuck, we need to, to address this. We're in free fall I just, at the moment. We're in I free just fall. jumped on... We we are we are. I just jumped on um, the sacrace dot com just to have a quick squizzy at some odds for you know you were talking about uh, you know it's grass greener who's 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 to come in. Arteta is four to one. Uh, Pochettino, I'm saying two to one, six to one. But I've seen you boys talking this morning, Tony. Six to one, eight to one. Yeah, there was all reports going around Twitter that he was evens or one to one, if that's how you do your odds. And yeah. so I looked because I thought that that is terrible value. And obviously, I'm involved in the betting industry, and I thought I know bookies take the piss, but that's ridiculous. So I looked, and I couldn't see anywhere that was that was evens. Um, yeah. And I I could have got just from a high street bookie, nothing special, no industry contacts. I, I could have got eight to one just there and then. So yeah, okay. there was there was a big difference between the best and the worst, but. I think people trying to cause drama are saying, oh, look how close he is, it must be happening. It's like, well, if you look at that way, if you're, if you're, if you're taking a bookie as your source and you choose to believe <laughs> one that says it's really close, to, like the odds are really low, but then you mm. can choose another bookie and say, oh, it's got no chance of happening. So, yeah, I, mean, I, don't yeah. I almost felt, and, and I'm sad to say this because I'd like to see him at the club, but I almost felt that that is one of those, that the insider knowledge is that they know he's not going to join Arsenal. And between the bookmaking industry, I sort of felt that was it. Because I looked at the odds as well, I saw those comments earlier. And I think with Bet, Vic, Bet Victor, one of the companies, you could get, it was down to two to one. And you're right, the rest of them were like six or sevens or eights. Oh, that's that's and, what I'm looking at, DV. Yeah, yeah okay, Bet, two Bet to one. Victor. So I think it was almost like it's one of those, right, you know, Victor, you stick your prices, you 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 cre- will create a rumour, you drop your price to two to one, and everyone will start betting, you know, and the bookmakers will take mm. some money. It's almost like they knew it wasn't going to happen. I hope they're wrong. Well, I, I think PP, that's Paddy Power, they're at six to one, so... Yeah. They, they were the biggest at eight and bet fair. But yeah, you get different odds to us as well, so it might still be eight or so over here. To, yep. to answer Hakon's questions for me, why is he still here? I agree with Darren. I just think they haven't got a replacement lined up. But I'm at the point now, and I always said I wouldn't want to give it to Freddie for like a game or two while we get someone else. But I would now because this is just going nowhere fast with him and it's getting worse and worse. Uh, mm-hmm. So now I would be happy just to get rid of him straight away give uh, Lundberg the games until we get someone. The only negative from that is basically the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer situation. If if Lundberg comes in and wins three or four games, he then going to go, oh, off you go back to number two because we've bring in Johnny Newbloke. Mm. Uh, and that's the only negative I can see. But I, I, to be honest, I'd rather that than what we're doing at the moment. We, ain't gonna, we can't do anything at the moment. The, the players don't want to play. They don't know what they're doing. They're so short on confidence. He looks lost on the touchline and and look, I never really liked him, but even last, even towards the end of last season, he still looked like he had half an idea on the touchline. He still seemed up for it. Now you look at him in the touchline, he looks like 
I don't want to say he doesn't care. He looks like a broken man. He looked beat. Like you see him on the yeah. touchdown. So before it was all passion and that, that Joe Willock clip at the first game of the season where he was like celebrated like a goal when Joe Willock won a recovery tackle. Now you see we score and he doesn't even move. I think I yeah. think Emery's actually a broken man. Where, where Darren and look, you've always supported the manager to, and I'm not saying you've, you, you're an Emery Emery in guy. You just mate, you love the club. You support whoever whoever's you know uh, at the head there, but. Before we appointed Emery, and try and, and I'll ask you as well, saying try and take what's happened, the hatred out now at the moment. But where do you kind of rank, knowing more about Emery? Where do you rank him in? In you know, let's say your top, your top twenty managers around the world. Not in it. <laughs> He's not in it. No. Nah. Uh-huh. I don't, I think, what, I don't what think. What about you, top hundred then? Yeah. Top hundred. This what we've got at the moment is nowhere. The, yeah. the current version of Emery is not even a manager. You can't That's rank weird, it. Mm. So weird. I think when we, I think God, when we took him on, fifteen captains. Just silly. I think when we mm. took him on, when we appointed him. He had earned a place in the top ten. You know, he was Everton. He was uh, he was Sheffield United. You know, he was he was he was your Eddie Howe, wasn't he? He was uh, a manager that's managed at the top. Didn't work out really at PSG, but he'd earned his place. He'd won, you know, three Europa leagues. That's a, that's a a big thing to do with. Uh, um, lesser clubs and I think that's where he's good I think he's good with lesser clubs with lesser skill where he he creates something now he's got a, a, a group of talented players like he did at PSG I think he's a little bit out of his depth uh, or maybe a lot out of his depth uh, but when we took him mm-hmm. on I think he earned his place to be appointed at a club like Arsenal a top 10 in Europe club you know uh, what, what yeah. I would say is if we hadn't taken him I couldn't. I, I I was half happy with the appointment just because of the structure. He was used to a director of football or whatever we call that role. It is a director of football, but we give it a different name. So I, I wasn't. I was. I was quite pleased in that he fitted the mould we was looking for. But none of them. Other, say we didn't take him. I don't think any of the others would have done. He would have got a decent job, and he'll get a decent job when he leaves Arsenal. He'll go back, although not to Valencia because they don't like him, but a Seville. Um, that sort yeah, of... but that's, that's not a top 10. No, no, it's a mid-range club in Spain. He's, no, that's gone, what I'm he's, gone, yeah. being, he's gone from being a top 10 manager, isn't he, to, to maybe a top 20, top 25. But, but if we didn't take him, do you think another top 10 team would? I don't. Mm. Yeah, I think he would have got. He would have got. I mean, he'd managed. Uh, he'd, he'd had a good CV. He'd won things. You know, he did the treble at PSG, even though he was deemed a failure. Um, he was deemed a failure more because of his uh, inability to act with some of the big names there, Neymar, etc. Um, well, PSG is very hard because let's face it, their only goal is Champions League. Yeah. And if you can't win Champions League at PSG, you're out the door. Yeah, it's like the current uh, guy is in trouble there yeah. now, isn't he? Uh, the he he's in the shit now. Um, to, to, uh, what's his Tuchel. name? Thomas Tuchel. Tuchel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's in the shit now. I, I, the, the top of the fucking ladder, that, for crying out loud. Yeah. So I don't. I don't yeah. It's so hard to compare PSG. I look at the Sevilla um, pedigree, though, when he was there, and I think, well, I, I, I agree with Tony. I like what. I, I never. I don't even think we spoke about him, Tony, at the time when we we're talking managers. I don't even think his name come up. We're we're, we're talking about Arteta. You know, we're following the the, the, the rumours, but it was very left field, Emery. Yeah, no, I don't think he was one that that came up too often, and until it was basically confirmed. Um, but when you look, and at then that I said, I would... remember saying that I was a, a pleased of it because of the. Um, the structure. So I'm not going to sit in now and go. Oh, I never wanted him. I'm yeah, not. I can't say he was never a choice because I didn't even consider him. To but be Tony, honest. Tony, when you look at those that list of managers that when we've just been checking with the bookmakers, there's no one who really. I mean, look, we need to change, but there's nobody who jumps out that's an obvious choice in that list. Is there? Is there anyone in there that you think? Well, oh, it's him. He's, he's, he's an Arsenal man. Uh, no, I mean, but. I don't think I couldn't name anyone in world football that's in a job. That's it's the way football's going. The managers last for two years, so no one's an anyone man. You look at anyone and you go like United. We're just linking them to good managers, not that they're particularly United managers. Because say Pochettino is probably the strongest link with United if Solskjaer goes, and he's so far removed from what United have always been. But it's just because he's good. 
Okay, here's one. Here's one. Here's a question for you. Would you have Wenger back as a caretaker manager till the end of the season, which would then nah. keep Lundberg's nose in joint? He w- he wouldn't get upset. He could learn till the end of the year. <laughs> Give it to Wenger to the end of the season. What a good caretaker manager. Uh, I'm anyone but Wenger. We all know. I mean, but Emery. Sorry, yeah. we all know this. So I'll give it my nan. <laughs> I don't care at this point. <laughs> give it Xhaka. Give it a Bamiang. I do not give a fuck. <laughs> that that list you talked about, uh, Darren, and and sorry, we will get on to them. Keep on the questions in a minute. So you've got Arteta, Pochettino, Allegri there. Rafa, he's a surprise that I'd never thought. You know, he's 8-1 the one with BV and 8-1 the one with Paddy Power. Uh, Gerard, Stephen Gerard. Yeah, uh, Steve, Steve Gerard's been like, he was the same odds as like, a few others this morning. It's surprising. Yeah, yeah that, I thought that, that one. Shock, Actually, mate. yeah, that was a nice. I thought that would be an interesting one because he's young, he's, yeah. uh, he's played at the very top level, so he's not going to be intimidated by these, uh, these players. He is no, scouser. and then we're getting... <laughs> Look, I'm married well, to a scouser. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Patrick. If they can't Gerald, understand Emery, they ain't got there. much chance with Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Vieira, he's going to be there. Luis Enrique, take him off. He's gone to Spain. Uh, Brendan Rogers, he's a 12-1, to 10-1. to 1. Um, So, you know, Eddie Howe's at your 16-1s. So so. Nah. Who's Chris Wilder? Oh, yeah, Sheffield, Sheffield United. I think manager. he'll go. I think if Evans sacked their manager, they'll be stupid not to try and get him. Whether he goes is a different story, but I think he's got Everton written all over him. But that list is, you know, like then you're getting down. <laughs> Arsene Wenger, 25 to 1, 30 hey. to 1. So, you know, uh-huh. you're getting down to friggin' Desperados here, the bookies. Um, Tier Henry, Henry, 16 to 1. He's just joined. Um, some sixty-six to one at Paddy Bear. That's it. Bet Victory. What did you call them? BV. Who are they? Bet, yeah, Bet Victor. Victor. Yeah. That, mate, they're just they're just um, dropping odds to get notice. That's what yeah. they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see it. Yeah, sixteen to one, but Paddy Power's at sixty-six to one. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Klopp, hundred to one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man, Jesus. Hey, hey, continue on, Tony. <laughs> Pep, Pep's not in there. He's not even on the list. Uh. Nah. Jardim, that's who I was talking about. 25 to 1, 50 to 1. Yeah. Anyway, continue, Tony. Uh, sorry, phone's locked. Two secs. Um, We've got actually, um, if you want to have a little look, there's a list um, we we're going to talk about on a Patreon pod that we're all too busy on the international break. We might, I might touch with Craig and that. He, he put out an article. Uh, with his thoughts on the on the manager stuff, so have a little look at that if you want. Yeah. Uh, next question is M Dave in Double A Gunner, and I'm sure there's going to be about seven in a row. So I'm just going to read them as I've got them. Uh, mm-hmm. This has got out of hand. We play a new formation every 30 minutes, and we're still looking for our best team 15 months in. I don't even remember the last time I watched match of the day. What do you think is going on in the heads of the players and the board? The, to be honest, on the board, this, we spoke about this when we were talking about is San Lehi or Raul succeeding? And we were like, well, okay, he succeeded in the transfer window. Now he's got the new role of succeeding throughout the season. I have no fucking idea how they're watching that and not doing anything about it. No, it's almost like he's got, he, he's put a point up for himself on the transfer window and he's gone, job's done. I'm out. You boys sort your shit out now for the rest of the season. Yeah, I can't I mean, work it out. It, yeah, the only the only thing I will say is they could be working their ass off behind the scenes, and we just don't know it. But it just seems yeah, like if my my belief is the only reason they've not got rid of him is they've not got someone to to replace him. But it's been that long now that we've been abject that even if they wanted to keep him, you'd start sounding people out probably two months ago. And saying, would you, t- like, obviously not directly because then it gets leaked and then Emery's position comes under pressure. But you speak to the agents and say, if there was a managerial job available, would your client be interested in it? They should have been doing that a while ago now, which means that when you get to the point of now you need to get rid of him instantly, you're not like, oh, we're not sure we haven't got anyone to take it. You've got three or four people that you know on what terms they would take it and you pick the one that suits you best. I feel like they've been just been sitting on their hands. Tottenham done it really well. I, I, no, nobody can tell me otherwise. Mourinho was lined up well before Pochettino oh, left. Long time. Mourinho, uh, was he watching an Arsenal game? That's what. Yeah, he was at Arsenal. Led to rumours, mate. They played it so well, absolutely so well. 
And oh, I don't know whether somebody in Tottenham said, go over and watch the Arsenal game and that'll fucking create some speculation. It just, I don't know. It's What's funny how uh, things change, isn't it? Because Pochettino um, has what one? Uh, what's this, this ridiculous stand? It six out the last twenty games or something, uh, and yet he's and he's sacked, and we all want him as our manager. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm his not, record no, for the look, last eighteen months is terrible. I, I would take him, but I, he let's let's face it. As, as we don't like Tottenham, they're a pile of shit. But let's face it. He 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 did in the last five years. He's bought that mediocre team up out of the ashes, mate. They, they were at a Champions League final. Yeah, I'll now, take him. I'll take him. So you, you know, on, like on just ability as a manager, he would be my first choice. Obviously, there's a lot of baggage that comes with that, but on purely who is the best manager available that would suit us the best, I think the answer would be him. Mm. Yeah. Again, you have to know. consider them. I'm I, disregarding the baggage, which you can't do. It's a factor. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, on technical ability, who is the best manager? It would be him. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be disappointed. No way. You wouldn't be disappointed. No, not at all. No. Uh, and you got you got to take away the the fact that he he was the Tottenham coach and things like that. We've done that in the past with players, so. That yeah. doesn't bother me. Mm. Okay. Well, it just it yeah. feels even better if they're successful, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. To it. yeah. Uh, next question, MWA Gunner again. I can't believe we used to complain about finishing fourth, playing pretty football and challenging for a maximum of 75% of the season. This is a genuine question. And I know it will never happen, but listen, would you take Wenba, I'm assuming he means Wenger, uh, with our current transfer team? I'm anyone but Emery, as everyone knows. Uh, so. I... I, I, I I just look okay. Wenger comes back in, right? He doesn't turn. He doesn't turn the ship around. Like I know he's he, he left with his legacy in a bit of tatters. Um, there was a very disjointed fan base, very split fan base. For me, I don't want that for the man. He's got a role in the uh, is it FIFA now. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah, he's got a role there. Great, brilliant, excellent. Stay there. I don't, I don't dislike you. I love you. I always have, but yeah. No. Yeah, I think with, with me, it's come down, again, he wouldn't be an option. He's not my first, second, third, fourth, tenth choice. But if I was, you have Emery or Wenger, my answer would be Wenger. But then, as I said, if the answer was I could have Emery or my dog, it would be my dog. I'm at that mm. point. Anything okay. on that, Aaron? Yeah, no, you know, I brought it up as a joke. It's not going to happen, so it's, no, it's not, not worth talking about. Um, next question from expat Guna, uh, Mr. DJ. <laughs> I love that response. Come on, I'm going to use that. <laughs> Would you uh, sorry, give Freddie the managerial job until the summer with fun to spend in January or as a caretaker now until January and hire someone else then to lead the club forward as Emery is not the answer? Should the board be sacked with... Um, immediate effect and replaced with O'Leary and Marwood uh, Darren obviously you're more clued up on O'Leary and Marwood than, than me and Tez yeah, so, yeah I met Brian Marwood on, on one day I didn't know he was, uh, he was even touting himself around as our manager I, no, no. Yeah, I, met him in one of the, <laughs> I met him in one of the executive boxes at the old clock end at Highbury um, he came in I was a guest in one of these uh, boxes um, and he he was one of the current players and wasn't playing that day and came in to meet he knew the guy who owned the box so came in and had a bit of lunch with us and stuff and I remember when he left it was embarrassing because he said to me I don't know how old I was probably 30 something he said uh, would you like to have your photo taken with me before I go and I went no <laughs> I said go and get Tony Adams or someone and then I will <laughs> did you have photos in them days? huh? did they have cameras in them days? Yeah, he <laughs> was, was a bloke with, uh, with one of those on a stick with a big light bulb and a big load of smoke. Oh, I thought it was yeah. just a guy drawing a picture. Jesus Christ. Fucking <laughs> okay, how old do you think mm. I am? <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I didn't know Marwood was about. O'Leary um, was, um, was a really great player. I think he still holds a club record for the amount of appearances he made for the club. Um, real Arsenal man, but was a bit of a failure as a manager, unfortunately. Well, apparently, I don't know if you know this, um, there's, apparently there's a, been big arguments amongst the board recently where some of the older members of the board 
what you'd say the more historic Arsenal have been trying to get O'Leary in and the newer members of the board, I'm presuming Edu, Raul, Vinay, etc., have been blocking that. Um, that's the rumour that's going around, which is I'm assuming why this question's come. I don't know about Mar- Marwood's at City, I think. Um, so I'm guessing that's why he's been added into the question, but I've not heard his name mentioned um, with connection with us. But I know O'Leary, there's apparently big divisions within the board about appointing him. I don't know to do what. I, I don't know, just as part of the board, but I don't know the exact role. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if many of our fans these days know much about O'Leary. I say he played for us forever, but his managerial career, he, he sort of fucked up Leeds. Leeds are in the problem they're in now, in the state they're in, in the championship. Um, because of O'Leary, they were always one of the British, British, biggest clubs in uh, in in English football history. Uh, uh, hey. O'Leary went there and spent a lot of money, got them in all sorts of financial travel, gambled on on putting a great team together, and it didn't quite work, and they got relegated, and uh, they've never got back. <clears throat> there was that story with Seth Johnson where they said, "Oh, we're not offering you more than." He walked in, they said, "Oh, we're not offering you more than forty five thousand a week," and at then times that was high wages. And he went, yeah, and he said that when he came out, I was only expecting 20. Yeah, yeah. they really did mess the club up. I, I don't, so I don't see, you know, you're not going to bring him to look after your finances, are you? Or uh, look after yeah, your Yeah, so I don't, I don't know what role it is. I've just read quite a lot that there is divisions within the boardroom about bringing him in, but I said I don't know to do what. Yeah. I mean, I will say, he's an Arsenal man, and uh, I, again, watched him. He's a little bit older than me, but I've watched most of his games, played a long, long time for us, and uh, he's a proper Arsenal man. Uh, another MAA Ghana. What season do you think were the closest to winning the title since 2004? I know people would say they left the year, but in my opinion, we should have won it the in the Ramsey year or even the year United last won it because we missed out by five points but finished fourth. Uh, I can't remember the last United year. I thought they walked it. I mean, even if we did only miss out by five points, I think they won it really early. So you can cut. I always dis- disregard the table when a team's won it in like March because they're just on their jollies. Yeah. And and the, the points total, they could have got so many more. Um, the Ramsey year was that the year we got turned over at Liverpool when we was pissing the league and then lost five one at Liverpool and collapsed. Um, that that was as good a chance as any, to be honest. Again, the, the Leicester year, they won it by miles. They they switched off again. I don't know what the total points was at the end, but they they won it comfortably. I'd probably say it was that year where Ramsey was on fire and then got injured and we got turned over at Liverpool was probably our best chance. Yeah, I think that uh, Leicester year um, was close. I think when we we played them on a Tuesday, Wednesday night, didn't we, towards the end of the season at home and scored a last-minute winner. It was a Sunday morning. It was like a Sunday 11 o'clock kickoff. It was ridiculous. I was knackered. No, no, no. Leicester was a definitely evening game. That, that, How much money have you got in your bank? Well, you can. Have I'll it. bet you. I'll <laughs> bet you every penny you have. It was a Sunday morning, midday. All right. Well, I remember it as an evening game. We won two <laughs> one. Uh, Danny Welbeck flick on header. <laughs> the last touch is it Sunday twelve o'clock. Okay. Well, uh, disagree. Well, I'll, I'll have a look. Uh, <laughs> and I know I'm right. You, you don't have to waste. Your well, what I'm saying is, is that felt like uh, a turning point. It felt like. We got closer to them. We actually nicked it in the last minute. It was the last great atmosphere I remember at the Emirates. Really, everyone was up for it because it was on a lovely evening and we'd just scored and it was about 10 <laughs> o'clock at night. Uh, and, uh, but hang on, let's not let's not forget Leicester. Fucking like, okay, they won the league that year. But how many, oh, there was one or two. Nobody thought they were going to ever, ever. Like, nobody went, oh, Leicester's going to win the league this year. So... For me, it was that due to the fact that I never ever predicted Leicester was going to win the league that no, year. Like, but my on. point, Tess, was that that night or that half Sunday afternoon, um, I remember it felt like it was the turning point and we had caught them up a little and we they were going to collapse and we were going to go on and win the league. It was a, it was that feeling. Yeah, and it was, we, yeah, I we, suppose. We faltered our next two games. And I remember they got stronger and stronger. They won at Tottenham. They, uh, yeah, they just kept Manchester going, City. yeah. They were, they were brilliant at the end of the season. You know, they... Uh, you know, we fought. Uh, got to yeah. give him a lot of credit that year. Yeah. It was actually... Tony, Tony's time. looking hey, for... I, 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 I knew right. Tony I was looking. To look. <laughs> I, I knew I was right. I remember it so clearly. It was the same Valentine's Day. It was a midday kickoff on a Sunday. 
<laughs> no, I don't know. They wouldn't have a good probably three AM in the morning for me. Yeah. I right, get on to the next question. We'll be here all day. Uh, maybe maybe that's it. Maybe I was in a different country. <laughs> um, um, you're probably in India, weren't you? And, uh, no, well, no. I think um, when when what year was that? Now, 2016. Yeah, I was yeah, in India, but I, uh, I I I I came Fucking home. Hell. I came home. And so I, no, but I always came home for the last six weeks of the season. Um, you know, I, I went to Wembley the years we were there because I, even though I was in India, because you know I used to come home to see the end and the start of the season. Um, I'm looking at yeah, that it, was in yeah. February, it's Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh, on, carry on, read your questions. <laughs> I'm looking. So just to be clear, you're not taking up my bet right, of everything you own. <laughs> I don't now own you. Hang on, See what on. happens when you turn fifty, peeps. No, no, no. I'm still, looking, I'm, still, I'm still I still remember the night. <laughs> I, I don't concede it at all. I'm, 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 just right, I'm, I'm still Let's willing to let you questions. take that bet. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell. Um, so next question, M W Gunner again. Isn't it a bit strange? Arteta seems like a stronger candidate compared to Lundberg when Lundberg has more experience. I disagree with that. I disagree because let's face it. Pepe is no mug. Uh, Pepe, fucking uh, Pep, he's no mug. So, mate, when you're learning from the best of the best, you're fucking getting that trade. And for me, he's he's still probably oh, – look, there's a, probably an argument for this, but I rank him as probably the best manager going around at the moment. So when you're his apprentice <laughs> – Bring Arteta on for me. Yes, okay, he's not. He, he hasn't had that first team um, experience and things like that. But that'll come. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I think everyone. Look, you never see clubs that he didn't play at linked with him. You've seen Everton linked with him and us linked with him and Rangers before Gerrard went there. And everyone at the club always said he was an amazing captain. Even when the fans were slating him because he wasn't playing every week, the players and everyone always said he was an amazing captain. And he was always going to be a future manager. So I wonder if it's just based on what they know of him. Because as I said, you never saw, he wasn't linked with the Tottenham job or he's never linked with any other job apart from us, Everton and briefly Rangers and all three of them he's played at. So I just wonder if it is that the people within the club know how he thinks and what he's like and just expect him to be a good manager because of what they know of him. Mm-hmm. But then you throw that in with, I've worked alongside Pep for how many years? Oh, oh yeah, look, that that, that definitely I helps just, because that's where he's he's got his actual experience. But yeah, so I don't think other clubs are looking at him and saying, "Oh, he's Pep's number two. Let's bring him in." It seems to only be clubs where they know him and know his character. Nothing against Freddie, like, absolutely nothing against Freddie. Like I think he would fit the mould well, but I just oh, I, think, I think for me, Arteta type of wins that race. Like who did Freddie work under? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Emery. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I think so. the difference is that he had the the Lundberg's had a year or two with the youth team where he's he's been actually the manager and they've done well. So when you say he's more experienced, when the question sorry says he's more experienced, he's it's kind of he's half more experienced yeah, okay. he's had a, a season, but it was with a a, a, a youth team. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next question, Emma League on again is a question for me. I know you don't really go Europa League group stage games because they're shit, but did you go to the Champions League uh, group games, even the away ones? I've been to every home Europa League group game since we've been in the Europa League. I don't go away because not because they're shit games. It's usually where they are. They're expensive. You tend to be in fucking Vorskla, which I don't even know if is <laughs> a place somewhere. I mean, the game got moved to Kiev about five hours before kickoff. Uh, they're just in places I don't really want to go. I was going to go sporting last year, but I'd been to Portugal that summer, so I didn't bother. Um, so I do go to Europa League group games um, and in, I didn't go to Champions League away group games or I'd pick one if it was in an attractive city. Um, but I tended not to. Um, I went to Bayern once and then I'd seen it. I used to go to some knockout games. I was in Barcelona. I went to, I've been to a few different games. But I tended to not go Champions League away group games unless they were in somewhere where I wanted to go. I always, when I go away in Europe, as in Champions League or Europa League, I only go places where it's not just for football, so I can spend three or four days there. Because I think if you go just for football and you lose and you're shit, then it just ruins everything. Like I, I think Baku is an amazing place. Had I only gone for the 12 hours of the football, I would hate it. And I'd say, people, mm. I don't care, it's a load of shit. Now I've got nothing but positives about Baku because I went for five days and I really enjoyed myself, apart from the football. 
Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm double A gunner again. How shit when Napoli, Spurs, etc. to get outplayed by us under Emery? Please ask me how he was capable of setting us up in those games. Can I just answer this quickly? Aaron Ramsey. Go on, what's your answer? Okay. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Next question. Fine. Next well, question. it is. It, literally, all day, every time we played well, like that Tottenham game, we was 2-1 down at halftime. The one he's talking about, we won 4-2. Bang Ramsey on a 1-4-2. Napoli, Ramsey was man in a match. Napoli, the second leg, we didn't outplay them. We won by free kick. Ramsey got injured and our season fell apart after that. Um, uh, the M- hard player to replace. Yeah, oh, no, he weren't good enough, apparently. Um, MWA Gunner, the most logical thing to do is sack Emery and hire Pochettino, so I don't think we're getting him. I, I agree with what Darren said. I don't think he would come. I don't think it's an option, really. Do, do you think is Do you think... What makes you say that, though? Like, is it well, he done an interview about a year ago Tottenham? saying he'd never managed Barcelona because he was at Espanyol and he'd never managed Arsenal because he was at Tottenham. Yeah, but uh, I think Mourinho also had an interview. Yeah, he did say he'd never managed been. Tottenham because he managed Chelsea. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I just don't think it would happen. I, look, I'd love to be proved wrong. As I said, I think as just a, a technical manager, he is the best option that's available. I just did don't... you see that? Yeah, <laughs> did you see that thing? I don't know if it's true or not. There was a, a meme or something getting around about Delhi, uh, the alley. Um, he said, oh, I... is his brother. <laughs> He said, "I'll never. I hope he. I hope Mourinho never comes to Tottenham." Oh, no, that's fake. Yeah, there's a tweet. Oh, it was fake. Everyone <laughs> believes it. Yeah, literally yeah, everyone oh, believes it. Like, it was fake. Oh, it was okay. <laughs> oh, fucking social media. <laughs> yeah. Next question is Sandeep Singh. Uh, Lacazette's reaction after equalising was of relief, and why the fuck am I playing for this shit manager? Has Emery lost the dressing room? If not, then what is the reason that the team in 19th are dominating us? Uh, I think you we, always say, you say confused, don't you? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. You're saying the players are confused. I, yeah. I, I honestly think he's lost half the dressing room. The senior, senior players, I think he's lost. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, if you don't know what you're doing or supposed to be doing, is that lost? I don't know. The, the term lost dressing room seems to be thrown about for any time a team ain't playing well. I don't know, like, for me, a lost dressing room is when they all, oh, you're a cunt, I'm not listening to you. I think the problem is they are trying to listen to him, but they don't really know what they're doing. I, I think they'd be better off just completely ignoring him and going and do their own thing. Yeah, but, mate, they, these guys, like, they're professionals. No, but like, that's what I'm saying, about lost don't dressing know. room, I don't know what the term lost dressing room means. I think it means different things to different people. No, I think yeah, there's yeah, some really clear examples of that. Um, Mourinho's, you know, last few months <laughs> at, uh, Chelsea. Uh, yeah. at Chelsea, at Manchester United, you know, when the players just, you know, you could, people like Pogba really are openly coming out and don't want to play for the manager, don't want to support the manager. Uh, I don't think we've seen any of that from Arsenal. I don't think we've seen it. We're just lacking in confidence because nothing is working. Where are we seeing these rumours coming from, though, Darren? And I, I don't know, once again, how true it is. But, you know, there was links with a Bamiang to different clubs, buying Barcelona was metal. I don't think it will happen, obviously. But, yeah, Barcelona was floating around. Uh, there was another one, um, Lacazette, to somewhere. And, and these are the last couple of weeks over the international break. If it's coming from their agents or around that way, I, I might think, well... Uh, you know, are they putting the feelers out saying we don't want the manager? That's just the. Oh, I know it's a bit cryptical, but. But I think well, it's, you know. I, I think it's uh, important to say I mean, we are a toxic club at the moment. We've got the toxic fan base. It's a, an unpleasant place to play football. Everyone's always said Arsenal's is like a family. It's a wonderful place to play football. Um, I don't think it's a, a very enjoyable place to be. I think as professional footballers, they'll look at what happened to Xhaka recently. And I think players like um, Lacazette and Aubameyang may be looking and thinking, well, this is crap. I don't like playing here. I'm going to go play somewhere else. Uh, it's a toxic mm. place to play football. The story Well, that was, was another player, Granite. Yeah, that was another one that said, I don't know where it come from, but he was heading to such another club as well. So it's very weird. Yeah. Um... Next question. Uh, why the clubs that spend the most struggle the most? That's MWA Gunner. Yeah, that's not true. Mm. I think, I mean... Why I is think that squeaky I'm noise, spend- by the way, this time? Not me. <laughs> I'd be an Aussie bird. That noisy cunt of a thing. Sounds like I, 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 WD-40. 
Um, I'll be back in a minute, boys. I'll just go and get a fucking gun and blow the tongue. Just... <laughs> I mean, or you could just mute your mic when you're not talking if you want to be less. <laughs> um, the, uh, I think I, suppose... <laughs> I can hear it now. I couldn't hear it before. <laughs> you're sitting on your head. I think us and Tottenham spent the most this this summer, so I think that's probably why the questions come. Yeah, no, but it's, it's, of... it's, it's wrong though. It, the, the correlation between wages and money spent and league position over the you know there was a great analysis done a couple of years on this, and pretty much the amount of money you spend on wages is pretty much where you finish in the league. It's not always the case. There are always anomalies. Leicester is a great um, indicator of that. Sheffield United this year compared to Arsenal, it's a great indicator. But generally, that's what it is. The teams that have spent the most money, Chelsea. You know, from a, a decade ago until five years ago, with a successful team before that, Manchester United. Um, you know, since that, Manchester City um, in European football. You know, Paris Saint Germain. It, 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 you know, they're the teams that spend the most money are the most successful. Yeah, yeah but hang oh. about. Look, let's let's have a look at Liverpool. Now, now they've spent a few bucks over the last two, three seasons. Agree? Yeah, it's been fortunes. It goes under the radar how much they've spent. Yeah, Le- Leicester City, they were no mugs in the transfer window last year. Brendan Rodgers came in, he had a good budget. No, they again, they, they even broke their, I think they even broke their record, didn't they? Yeah, With, um, yeah they got 80 yeah. million in for Maguire, so it was. it's, it's not going to look like a, a, a gross spend, you know, net spend. Yeah, but they spend, they're they spending, they're spending. Let's say Manchester City, well, we all know they spend. Top four, Chelsea are in in fourth place, let's say they probably didn't spend much last window, but over the last few years they've done all right. Hence the reason they got the transfer ban, window ban, isn't it? Um, so, you know, then, you know, your top four, they're all up there spending good money. Um, Wolves, well, they've got a great link with, um, who's that agent? Yeah. So, so and then obviously you can look at six, seven down to Arsenal, uh, Sheffield, you're not at Burnley, what? Yeah, but you know the top four or five teams they've they've spent good money. Yeah. Next question is Sandeep again. Uh, Emery is a puta. I learned this word from watching Narcos. I know Darren knows what it means. If Tez doesn't Google it. Um, next question, Sandeep again. Southampton managed 21 shots against Arsenal. They had managed a grand total of 13 shots in their previous three matches. Now rumours really? the board will reassess wow. the situation <laughs> after West Ham. Why wait? Well, he just says why, but I assume he means why wait. Do you know, that's another stat. Isn't it? I mean, they had, I mean, I always said I'm not too bothered about letting teams shoot against us because a lot of them are from outside the box and we've got a good enough goalkeeper to stop these. But this, these teams, have, it, forget the shots, forget that statistic. Watch the game of football at the weekend. The team that had just been beaten, what, two games before, three games before, had been beaten 9 nil at their own stadium. Uh, hadn't scored a goal for two or three weeks. Battered us played us off the park with a better side. Player for player, everyone won every second ball, created every chance. They were better than us uh, in all departments. It was embarrassingly bad. You know? I, I know, I know. I think, Tony, you said you thought if, if, if they were going to get rid of him, this international break was probably the time to, to do it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I looked ahead to see, you know, obviously who we got up and what's, what's happening um, I type of didn't think now that we would get rid of him in December because we've got so many games in December and it'd be so hard for a new manager to come in. On, on the then. flip side of that, if he carries on being shit and you lose all eight of them, you're severely fucked. Oh, um, absolutely. And, but I just you know what don't I mean? think I'm playing the other side of the mm. Well, I've, 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 I'm thinking Manchester United second, second. Second of January. Uh, oh, it's, what it's the first day. Oh, it's the first here. First yeah. for you guys. Sorry, but um, now that's. I don't know whether you want a new manager before that game or after that game. I, I don't would know. be astounded if he makes it till then. But you've got a break until the eleventh or tenth for you guys. Yeah, I just I'll be fucking amazed if he makes it mm. till then. Because yeah, I, think well, that, we've got, I know. I don't know in what order, but I know we've got <laughs> City then Everton, then Bournemouth away on the 26th, Chelsea at home on the 28th, and Man United at home on the 1st. No yeah. way they can see him through these games the way things are going at the moment. Mm. It's so hard. Like, But I thought about, you know, who, who, if you bring in an Arteta, like you... Uh, if you bring in Freddie and you got 
Chelsea, Man United, and lose them two games. But that's why you do it. Twist. That's why you do it now when we've got Frankfurt. You should have done it now. Yeah. That, no, but even now you've got Frankfurt in a game that doesn't really matter. Then you've oh, got yeah, yeah. Norwich yeah, away. Yeah. Norwich away, who have only won one game all, at home all season, I think. Then you've got mm. Brighton at home. We're doing half decent, but it's still Brighton at home. And then you've yep. got West Ham away, who are worse than us at the moment. Yeah, so it should be. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay, it should be done now. But if it's not done now in the next week or two, I think I, I can't. I, I think he's going to see it at December. Yeah, I, I'd be amazed. Uh, next question is Halls of Marble. We are the Arsenal, and because we are the Arsenal, ordinarily we shouldn't be scared of going to Norwich. But I generally think they're favourites to win based on our current form and their win the other day at Everton. Uh, is he the only one that thinks this way? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something in me tells me we're going to win, but I don't know what that is because I look at us and I, I can't see how we're going to win a game of football. I just don't really rate Norwich. So, yeah, it's, it's irrational and just me being Arsenal and saying, oh, yeah, we'll win that. But I'll probably sit in the head of where you just go to these teams and win. But we're, not that we're, team. we're fans. We, you know, we, we turned up that game on Saturday thinking we would win, you know, because we're hoping that we would win, hoping this was the game that it would all turn around and we'd see something to get excited about. Uh, it didn't happen again. And unfortunately, we go away to Norwich and it's with trepidation. We were as nervous as the players. Yeah. Norwich you couldn't I'm fucking a bet- buy a point and then they go and I'm- fucking win at Everton. <laughs> I'm a betting man and I'm not betting on it. I'm not betting on another Arsenal game this season. <laughs> Uh, Lewis R.I.P. J. Dealer that'll do um, seriously how what much a of, what, a, so what, was, what a cunt of a name yeah I mean he's in oh, the he's in the thingy he's my biggest sort fan he's out. my biggest fan in the WhatsApp group leave him alone it's a great name um, I sort of it out great name keep it up um, <laughs> Seriously, how much longer can this go on? Results will never improve under Emery and we're slipping further every week. How does Raul and Co not pull the trigger already? I think we've covered that and we don't know. Yep. Basically, like, I can't see any no. reason. Um, MWA Gunners have an argument about someone about not celebrating, I think. Blah, blah, blah. Mm, I'd probably lack a zit girl. Yeah, uh, I just can't bother to read them all. Uh, what yeah. your thoughts on getting rid of one of a Bamiang or uh, or Lacazette and play a four-two-three-one with two proper wingers? That's Lewis again. Nah, you go, Darren. Sorry, was there a question in there? Yeah, what are your thoughts on getting rid of one of a Bamiang or Lacazette and playing a four-two-three-one with two wingers? Well, I think the the issue is we're going to lose one of those at the moment because it doesn't look like either of them want to play there. Um, you know, they both look unhappy. We were Who would you want to lose, Darren, out of both of them? Uh, like I said, it always looks miserable. <laughs> you know, he never looks like uh, he's particularly enjoying it. I thought, you know, when he scored that equaliser, the same sort of thing. It was it was a strange reaction. I'm not sure he's enjoying his time at Arsenal. Um, we'll I take... actually thought for both goals, I thought even the first goal, he was very muted. Um, and I think that's quite unlike him. Again, I don't know if he's fallen out with Emery, doesn't like Emery, still not fit. We never know. But I thought for him especially, I thought both celebrations were very muted. Yeah, and true. the first one, I mean, I know we were 1-0 down, but you made it one all after 18 minutes. It's not like you need to rush to get the ball back and get the game started immediately. Um, you can celebrate that goal and no one would bat an eyelid. They wouldn't be like, oh, you're losing. Um, but yeah, I thought they were strange for him for the way he usually celebrates. I thought it was pretty strange, pretty different. Yeah, they look. I say it was a it was a real strange uh, atmosphere in the crowd and the players. There was a resignation that we're just shit. <laughs> it's <was> horrible. <laughs> yeah, um, title of the podcast again. We are shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to say that if you agree with the question and who would you get rid of after yesterday when he's got two and a Bamiyang's done next to fuck all. It's hard to go. Oh yeah, I'll keep a Bamiyang, but. I was, I was thinking that when Darren said it. And yeah, then I, I mean, everyone knows thinking, my answer. I don't need to yeah. answer. But, um, and, and Lacazette was the man of the, man of the world last season. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm morons. Um, Gate of Luna, <laughs> we should create a fan survival guide on how to survive this season. He'll start. He tries to avoid Twitter as much as possible after games like yesterday. I mean, we can't listen to Tez on this issue because his heart blew up a couple of weeks ago. So, Darren, any tips on survival? No, it's uh, it's just feels like a, a long punishment this year, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. I, it's, the, it's the little things in life that I, I've missed, living in India and moving back to the UK now. I miss watching Match of the Day on a Saturday night or a Sunday morning. 
I don't want to watch it now. <laughs> I don't want to watch it. I used to like watching goals on Sunday on a Sunday afternoon. I used to, you know, there's things that I was looking forward to, falling back into that rhythm. I haven't watched the press conference, you know, from memory this week after the game. or you know, I just don't want to. I'm depressed by it all. So how to survive this season? It's a lot more fun being positive than it is being negative. It's always a lot more fun being an optimist. Uh, uh, I, I, I would just suggest try that. I actually felt a bit for Emery now. Emery's in that situation where he's lost the he's he's lost the the stadium. He's lost the supporters. He he knows he's going to get sacked, <laughs> uh, and he's in that you know. So he's he is, he's trying something new every ten minutes now. It's just not working. Uh, I feel it. Dead man walking. Yeah, it's it's um it's going to be it's going to be an exciting second half of the season. See if we can win the Europa League. This uh, next, it isn't a question, but it kind of touches on what Tez asked earlier. So this is a guy called, well, his Twitter's at Raging underscore, or he lives in America. And he says, funnily enough, I, I've uh, a fair few of the UK fans muted because honestly, if they lived here and supported a team the way they do, they'd probably get run out of town for being completely daft and having no knowledge of sport. Yeah, that's good. good I'd agree with that. Mm. And then Gay Aguna, who's also, I think, in America, I know he's abroad, said, I really don't get them sometimes. I love this comment. And, and most of the fans are affecting the players' performance by not backing the team. And, yeah, it is completely right. Like, uh, I'm only bringing out, it's not a question, but obviously you... you yeah, yeah, yeah. Earlier. Uh, sorry, I'm just delaying while I get to the questions on WhatsApp. Um, why are we still so shit? Because Emery's there. Uh, why aren't we going for Poch? We don't know if we are. Uh Sushan, when when was our fan base last so apathetic for an injury time equaliser? Has Emery sucked every ounce of positivity from the fan base? Yes. Yeah, I like that. That's a good, good. I've read that one earlier. Yeah, Sushan, I couldn't agree more. It just feels like we've had the life sucked out of us. Hmm. Yeah. He uh, also asked about, has Pepe lost all confidence? Why did he not shoot? Well, we went on that earlier. I yeah. think he has. Well, I didn't say about the confidence. I think he has lost a bit of confidence, but I also think passing was the right option. This is the one I wanted to talk about. It's what I saw earlier. He adores Gwen Doozy, but he needs to keep his game simple and not try the magical pass every time. I think he's really one or the other. He's either too safe or too trying to be defence splitting. That's a terrible use of language. I, I, I said this before, and I think Gwen Doozy's causing us a massive problem because he's playing well, but he doesn't suit any of the other midfield players. So you have to keep him in because he's playing well, but then I don't know how you build a midfield with him in it because he's you can't play him with just a defensive midfielder because then there's not enough goals and assists from midfield. If you're playing with an attacking midfielder, no one defends. I, I really think he's causing us a problem. Sorry, I, I don't think you can play. Like, it's the formation and the setup. Like, And this comes to another point that I don't know if there's a question on it, but nobody's mentioned about, about Granite. Are we, are we missing Granite? There, like, and I know people are going to oh, fuck off. No one's going to admit lunatic. To I think we are. But, but I just I look at it, and you know, I think we're playing five at the back. We've got Guendouzi, Torreira there. Um, who do you leave out? They, like, you know, I just don't know. I don't know what the, what the answer is. But I think playing two mid, two in the midst doesn't work. Well, but then again, this is where my point comes in with Guendouzi, and it's not a stab at him because he's been very good. But you look at that, so there's five defenders. There's two, there's Torreira, who's a defensive midfielder, or should be a defensive midfielder. Guendouzi, yep. who gets no more than five assists and five goals a season. And then your keeper. So that's eight players that are not affecting the game at the top end of the pitch. So then you're relying on three players, Ozil, Aubameyang, and Lacazette, to, to do everything. To do something, yeah. So this is yeah, a, this but Aubameyang will run the channels and stay up top. Lacazette will drop back. But three players. So. Three play, and then Ozil's not going to get you enough goals. Uh, three players is not enough. You need another one. And that's where you'd usually say, like a Ramsey, added his fair share of goals. I, I think, I, I don't I don't know how the ideal way to play Guendouzi is. And again, I know I've criticised him before. This isn't me criticising him. It's just I don't know how he fits in a team. No, no, I, I agree. I agree. So um, now, now you've stopped. The, Jack is not getting the shit now. So we're starting to pick on Gendouzi. I heard that again. Like, hey, I, no, I'm listen, Tony. Not... Okay, I heard that as I was coming out the ground. By as I was, I was, you know, as you're walking down away from the ground. Um, it was the other weird thing with the game. Everyone stayed, didn't they? <laughs> you know. So uh, it was a slow walk out of the ground, and I'm listening. Urza was getting slagged off by someone who said he's been shit since he's got back in the side, which I thought was nonsense. I heard uh, Gendouzi getting criticised for being too negative and passing the ball back all the time. Um, 
um, you know, lack of zets, lack of attitude was being criticised. This is just walking away from the ground. And uh, somebody was saying Tierney was rubbish and what a waste of money he's turning out to be. You know, and these were all comments. And I'm thinking, yeah. you know, it's just yeah. everyone's just, you know, it's. it's everyone's it's, it's out as, as football fans, we're not yeah. rational, are we? It's like something's happened this week, so it's the worst thing ever. And then yeah. next week, something else happens, and that's the new worst thing ever. But the question right. was about Genduzi. And I think, uh, you know, something I touched on earlier, I think what we're missing in this side is that go to player that we've had at Arsenal always somewhere in the centre that you can give the ball to you know in recent years it's been Fabregas some, Cazorla um, uh, somebody who you can you can confidently give the ball to and know that they will keep it and keep possession and Xhaka is sort of that player for us even though we don't particularly you know like what he's doing he's a bit slow but he's that person when we haven't got that in the side Torreira is not that great at keeping the ball Genduzi just runs with it and then panics into giving the ball and generally backwards and I just would like to have seen Genduzi play alongside somebody really good you know I think getting a young kid into our team with all that energy would be lovely if he was playing alongside a senior <laughs> central midfielder we haven't got that star in our side we haven't got that person Ozil doesn't you know doesn't play there he's a little bit too advanced and I, I think that's the bit we're really missing but isn't there always something that we're missing <laughs> Well, I think as well the issue is that Ozil is probably that guy that can keep the ball, but and when he drops that deep, he does it. But then you miss so much going forward. Like who is it we're playing our last home game before yesterday, and we kept, we gave the ball away non-stop in the first ten minutes. Oh, Wolves, non-stop in the first ten minutes. And Ozil dropped deep, and we didn't give it away for the rest of the game. But we didn't create a thing because our only one creative player was basically playing pretty much where our centre-back should be. But, but what I'm saying is, is that Ozil, I know you're saying he is that type of player, but I was feeling 20 minutes into that game, I was trying to count how many times he touched the ball. You know, was he actually that's, Yeah, but playing? the problem... Yeah, but, but that's but because that if he goes back deep, for me. he doesn't affect the game. Yeah. He'll keep all the time, but then you, you... We only had three attacking players yesterday, as we've just said. So if Ozil comes deep to be that guy that keeps the ball, then you've now got Aubameyang and Lacazette on their own. Well, when when Jacko is in that side, he always uh, had more passes ground. than anybody else, wasn't he? He was always the top of our passing stats. Uh, he, he, Darren, uh, just, uh, Darren, just admit we're missing Granite. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not saying we're not missing him. I, I, no, no, I know, but there are going to be a lot of people that are going to say bullshit. We're not missing fucking Granite. We're we missing are a quality we've got the player three. in that position. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but. I'm, Oh, you know. I agree with Tony. We've got the three up the top, and I don't want to have groove, Tony, because it's fucking good disagreeing with that cunt. But we've got them three players up the top, and whether you've got Pepe, Abemiang, Lacazette, uh, whichever three you've got, you've got three attacking players. So you've got a Porsche up front, but you've got a fucking Datsun in the motor. And that's the problem. We have got Guendouzi, Torreira, and five at the back. Who's getting the ball? to these guys up the front first. Yeah, OK, we've got two goals. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. How, Fabregas, how back, Wiltshire, that sort of play, Cazorla, that well, player that We haven't got it. them players no more. We haven't. Well, there's no balance in this team. But there's no balance. It, it, this is where my problem comes in. I think the best midfield pairing, and I'm going to get absolutely slated for this, is Torreira and Xhaka. The, the problem is, Guendouzi's playing so well that can you drop him? But probably not. It's hard to. So mm. I think the best for the team... And it's probably been proven throughout the last two years that even when we've been shit, that when we've played best, has been with them too. Jack is not going to play for us again, is he? Here we are in I, January. Uh, I think he, I think if Emery stays, he'll have to, it, it's, it's one of his changes. Oh, we've lost again. We've not played well again. What else can I change to try and bring it back? We haven't won a game since Jack has been out. I'm not saying that's because of him, but it's something that Emery, when he's tinkering and thinking, what can I try now, will go, oh, well, we, we've not played in for five games and we ain't won any of them. Bring him back in. I think if Emery stays there, uh, I be to be honest, I'd probably think he'll play on Thursday. Well, we still haven't touched on that. You know, Terreras uh, comments this week that his agent's saying that he wants to leave the club. How do you feel on that? You know, as far as I'm concerned, if you don't want to play for the club, fuck off and go and play for someone else. I don't know if he doesn't want to play for the club or he doesn't want to play for Emery. I, was, I, was I think it's more he doesn't want to play for Emery. We've all it's so toxic though, like, Darren. Like you got to look at Ozil. Like, he's, you know, the poor, what's he played? Three, four Premier League games, 350,000 pounds a week. You know, he, and I'm not saying that, you know, he's that's his call, but he got a good contract. But I think it's Emery, mate. That it's just the toxicity uh, around these players. And that's where I say, like, you can't tell me that Ozil wants to play for Emery. 
you can't tell me that Granite wants to play for him. Lacazette. I, I just these senior players for me. I don't. I think he, he's lost them. There's so much chopping and changing. It seems like a Bamiang. He, he he just seems like a happy go lucky type bloke. I'll play for anyone. I just want to play football. But you watch when Lacazette gets subbed off. He's down in the dumps. He's hand, you know fuck. It doesn't want to come off. He's got the shits. Granite. Well, we seen what happened there. He got the shits with a fan, but there was pressure mounting. Um, that pressure could have been through. Obviously, was through Emery. It was toxic. Urzel. He's been left out to dry for half, well, most of the season. Who else is there? Like, there'd be other players there. Like, they just don't seem to be enjoying their football at all. Yeah. I'll move on to the next question because we could be on this one forever or that one forever. Uh, it's Sushant still. Uh, does anyone think that Luis and Socrates as a centre back pairing doesn't work? Both are front foot defenders. I'm not a fan of Socrates at all. I, I, just, I don't, don't know who my two would be, is my problem. I. I if someone said to me, what is our best two centre-backs, or our best pairing, not our best two centre-backs, I, I wouldn't know who to pick, to be honest. Yeah. He'd done something stupid against that Southampton game, so, and oh, I yeah, couldn't fucking ball smash it to Yeah. Oh, I'm so fucking angry with him. You can see it. Coming, but again, that comes from, I don't want to blame Emery for absolutely everything, but that comes from them being told, don't just kick the ball out. And he should have enough presence. It's, it's also his fault because he should have enough presence of, of mind to say, well, they've told me to not kick the ball out, but I have no option here. And if I lose the ball, I'm probably going to concede. So smash it. And if the manager moans at me, tell him to go fuck himself. But, and he's a senior pro, Socrates. So he should have enough in him to do that. But the problem is the thought is in his mind that I've got to play out. I've got to play out. And it shouldn't be like that. You've got to make the best decision. Not It's not always play out or always play long. It's the best decision for that situation. And I think that's something a lot of our players are struggling with. They're told to play a certain way and they're trying to play that way regardless of what is happening. And football's not like that. It's a fluid game. It's not chess where one movement happens and you can make a movement to counter it. Football's a fluid game with 22 blokes running about. There's not one answer to one. Something happens and there's a, a right answer every time. Look, I'm not in that situation, and I never have been, but do you think as a natural response, though, like uh, your, your natural instinct, I should say, would be to kick the ball out? and don't, I, I wouldn't go, oh, fuck, the manager told me to do this. Like, if I threw a tennis ball at you, I, I and, think and you, your natural instinct is to catch it. No, yeah, but if every day you're doing your natural inst- instincts on the training ground and he's telling you you're wrong every day, just play it. If you lose the ball, it's my fault, which is, is what a lot of managers that say to advocate from playing out from the back. I don't know if you would keep doing it. Like, it's hard to pull it in, into our everyday jobs, but I think if something you've done every day and they said, nope, that's wrong, you've got to do it this way, you've got to do it this way, and every time, every day, 10 times a day, they were saying, nope, you're doing it wrong, you've got to do it this way, I think your natural instinct goes out the window. Okay. I, 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 I kind of agree with what you're saying, where you should have the presence of mind, but I th- as I said, yeah. if you're getting told you're wrong every day, it's just easier to convert to what the person who keeps telling you off is saying. Mm, it's fucking frustrating, isn't it? Fuck. What, what would you have as our, our two? If you're picking a team now, who would you have as our two centre backs? Oh, da, da, David Lewis, he, he, he gets a start for me, and Chambers. Darren? Well, I don't know. I thought Socrates was quite good yesterday. I like the games where they, they're a little bit nasty and people lose their rag. Uh, his toughness. I was just thinking more uh, about a month, six weeks ago. Me especially, but I think all of us were sort of hoping that three of our first choice defenders would be back. In Tierney would come in to replace uh, Kalazanac. Um, Bellerin would come back to replace Ainsley, Maitland Niles or, or Chambers on the right. Uh, Holding would come in and replace um, Socrates Socr- 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 or Louise. And if you think now, six weeks later, Tierney started, but you know, not setting the team alight, which is fine. New, new club, new league, all that sort of stuff. Bellerin's, you know, still a yard short of, of how good he is. Holding's gone backwards a bit, and suddenly, you know, that defence just looks as ordinary. I thought that was going to be the the difference when you would see Bellerin with Pepe up the right. You know, you'd see um, uh, a Tierney running down the left. It just isn't working, is it? It's. Uh, you know, I think we've got the best two defenders, central defenders partnership that we've got at the moment. I mean, is that, is that what you'd play if you was picking the team? Yeah, I think so. I don't think Holding or Chambers have done enough to prove that they're any better than those two. Uh, I would. Uh, I wouldn't have said this three weeks ago. I'd, I'd go Chambers and Louise. Chambers just looks really assured when he plays. I was surprised that he was the one that was dragged off yesterday. Yeah, he's he a just good player, Louise, isn't he? Just calm. Mm. 
funny. I like them both. Um, I'm not saying they're brilliant. I'm not saying they're the world beaters, but I think it's just the best we've got at the moment. Oh yeah, no. Look, ideally, you wouldn't pick, probably wouldn't pick any of them, but that's what we've got to pick from, and you've got to pick two no. or maybe three of them. Hey, on, let's give a shout. Let's give a shout out and a condolences to Mustafi. Come on. Oh, he's on the bench. About him again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't even got a mention. Has yeah, he? I forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, where's that other kid, Mafropanus? Oh, fuck knows. He's not going to make it. He's, Chuck, nah. he's, he's an injury prone under yeah, memory <laughs> in any way even nah. before, long time ago he's so. gone he's, he's fucking well at the door yeah. uh-huh. he, he played that one game didn't he looked as nervous as anything he, he's not got yeah. it at that level um, what's your expectations for Frankfurt on Thursday any chance of improvement I expect us to lose I think Frankfurt are a decent team anyway and we're a shambles so I, I watched a bit of Frankfurt I've watched a couple of uh, I think I've seen two Frankfurt games in the last two or three weeks. They look all right, but I would like to think we beat them. I think, don't you think there's going to be a little bit of um, a relaxation from the players in that game? We're going to see some, you know, we're going to see Nelson, Saka if he's if he's not injured. Um, you know, Is he injured? Because he went on the bench yesterday. Yeah, I think I heard just for the game that he was injured. Uh, you know, we, we're going to see slightly different plays. Maybe Smith Rowe will play. You know, Holding will play. Uh, uh, Can will play? These are players now that it's almost a little bit more freedom playing on Thursday. I don't have much expectation. You know, but it, it, we tended to have played better in that, those competitions. You know, we're at home. It seems like you know, even the crowd. We don't care too much, and it's it's kind of a more relaxed atmosphere for these games, and we tend to enjoy them a bit more. Yeah. Uh. Suya, I think that's how you say it. Uh, why doesn't Emery realise the Guendouzi Torreira pivot doesn't work? I love Mateo and I hate to say it, this, but last season we had our best performance with Xhaka and Torreira. Is it time to bring them back? Yeah. See, we've just had that. Long yeah, you just said that time. Mightn't Mightn get, Mightn get slated. We mightn't get slated. Yeah. I was waiting for it. Um, why are Raul, well, I think it's why is Raul not sacking Emery even now? It will give our caretaker managers some time to build confidence in the next three or four games. I think we've done that to death, so yeah. I'll move on. Yeah. Raul not wanting to look like a screw-up um, is influencing not hiring anyone. That's from Vignac. Earlier in the season, me and Tony had a conversation in the group about Emery and Raul Axis and how them scratching each other's backs and consolidating power could be disastrous for us. Emery being Raul's man and all. Very, very faint shades of politics, maybe. I'm reaching, but any chance the boardroom has dynamic issues. I think the board can now, you know, there's the fact that, the, that we have all decided, you know, there's there's not a, a split like there was with Wenger when we went through that uh, civil war at the club. I think we just have all come to the opinion that this isn't good enough for Arsenal Football Club. We're getting played off the park week by week by everyone. Watford, you know, Sheffield United. Um, Southampton these are teams in the bottom three four of the of the league I think the, the Raul can now it doesn't matter that it was his, guy, his man he can now come out and say do you know what we're really disappointed we thought it would really work we thought he was the right man but this isn't good enough for Arsenal Football Club and we need to make a change he won't get any criticism for that for making that decision so right, he'll get more criticism for not bombing yeah. him off to the place. yeah um Last two questions from Kevin. Uh, again, I'm surprised at this. So many supporters have been raving about uh, Gwendozi so far this season. I, I love his energy, but sometimes think he runs around like a headless chicken, or in Tezzy's word, chook, uh, with no real substance. As soon as I saw the lineup, I just thought, once again, there is no substance in this team. <laughs> I think we're missing Sabi- when we Sabios was a big miss already. You know, having that extra creative player. Um, you know, you've got he's put Chambers in, you know, as a sort of almost to give us two wing backs, and that didn't work. But it was having that second creative player. Sabias is one of those that you can give the ball to, and he'll keep it. You know, generally. Uh, uh, That's it. But if, what, if you play a five, then you're still only going to play two midfielders. So what do you do? Play him with Torreira and drop Guendouzi, or drop Torreira and just think, fuck this, we ain't well, defending. No, you, you, I think you just put him in the midfield and you take Chambers out. You know. Oh yeah, no. Saying if you do play a five, then the two. If you bring Ceballos in, you've got to either abandon defending or drop Guendouzi, which is most people are hesitant to do. Yeah, but it, 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 you know something's got to change, isn't it? So I, I yeah. don't think it. I mean, he's out for a hey, while. Well, well, what? 
Yeah, as long as he out for that's what's going to ask. Well, it was, you know, that's another thing. I, I told you guys, I travelled to Portugal to watch Arsenal um, in the, in the, against Vitória in the uh, Europa League uh, 10 days ago, two weeks ago. And I saw his, he, him, Ceballos pull his hamstring. It was only a small pull, you know. And you want, at that time, you see him pull up in a run, you want him then to just walk off the pitch. But it took so long for them to get a substitute on. He played for about another three or four minutes. And he didn't play at full pace, but he was still running around. And uh, so from what looked like a real minor niggle, I reckon it's probably one of these, uh, you know, four-week jobs now. Yeah, I would I would estimate the same. I've not heard an official update. And obviously, two, if it is four weeks, two of them weeks are done. But then you're coming into a cold winter schedule where you've got games every two or three days, which is never fantastic for muscle injuries. Uh, last question is Kevin again. If we look at the energy that Emery last season with making changes at halftime, etc., it just looks like the pace of the Premier League has got to him at the end of the season and and has not left what's your thoughts I don't really understand the question well I think what he's saying the, pie, I mean, the pace of the Premier League well I think what he's saying that you know like um, last year we had that energy on the side didn't we but he would make these half time substitutions blimey how many times did we have the argument that uh, was he a genius you know for making these changes or was he rubbish at getting the, the, the line up wrong and from the start but he wasn't frightened of making changes he was that man on the side that you know love him or hate him last year when we were all very much supporting him we were saying well you know some inspired some inspired changes Changes. This year, he looks defeated. He looks. He's not making those changes. He doesn't know what to do. You know, he 65 minutes. You knew that 60 minutes in, right, he's finally going to make a substitution. He's going to take Chambers off. He's going to, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was very, very obvious. It just took him a long time to do it. Tony mentioned it at the start in this podcast. Ten minutes into the game, five minutes into the game, you thought, do you know what? This isn't going to work. You need to take Chambers off or at least push him into midfield until half time, you know? And, and we can yeah, see but that. What pisses me, Darren, I, I get that, but what gives me the shit? And we were all, all led to believe that Emery was a video fucking analysis man. He watches video after video after video. He's played Southampton. This would have been his fourth game, is it? Well, I don't know. There might have been cup games, third, third, fourth game. But yet, he didn't know how to set up tactically against Southampton. He got it wrong in so many ways that I don't think he could get further wrong than he did. We've all said it. Why start five at the back against fucking Southampton? So what did he, what did he do during the, the two-week international break? Lay around playing with his dick? Oh, well, what happened? Because <laughs> I, I, I just, I've seen no improvement. I've seen nothing. And I've seen nothing from this man to tell me that he does any research, watches any video. Like, people take the piss about Mourinho and, you know, he, he does play that park-the-bus football. Uh, Pep, you know, he plays a bit more top of attacking football. But these guys do their, seem to do their homework and you see that at, in the next game. I've seen nothing from Emery at all. I can't argue with you. Nor me. As much as I'd love to. Mm. <laughs> um, Fucking hell. Yeah. Didn't even get a That's bite it. at anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Zahn, did, you do, did, you do, did, did you do the ones on the WhatsApp group thing? Yeah, that's what them last eight or so were. Okay. Right, boys, I, think, I reckon that's a wrap. Um, what have we got? Norwich City. We've got Frankfurt coming up, so we'll pop in next week. Uh, Schwinn is still MIA. I, I have not seen that bloke since I've got out of hospital, so I don't know what's that mean, what he's up to. So he keeps popping up every now and then saying, yeah, I'm going to come on the podcast. But then when we record, we'll never hear from him. So don't know. Don't know. Um, any girls got going on, boys? That's about it, eh? Yeah, I've got, I've got nothing else. News are all good. Okay, we'll get on to you. Your patrons, I know you're calling for a podcast. We'll get on to that one shortly. I also want to do a Guna to Guna with uh, Darren and bring Darren into a bit more of his past and things like that. Um, I've also got a couple of other little things popping up over the next, I don't know, month or two. So, hey, okay, guys, thanks for listening. Thank you for downloading. You can follow us at clock and underscore talk. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, all that shit. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Cheers. Good day and good night. See ya. Blimey, that's another two hours. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> really? It went that long? Because <laughs> yeah, every question, we had a 10-minute chat about it. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I know we had a little bit at the start, but that's an hour and 58 minutes I've been recording. <laughs> Sometimes when you, you know how we say, you know, during the international break, but when things happen you've and you come back after two weeks, it's hard not to type of talk about it. <laughs> the thing is, there was, nothing that, there was nothing that we could have done, nothing happened with Arsenal. The, the news nah. was that nothing happened, as in that Emery didn't get sacked. And you can't do a yeah. podcast saying, oh, he's still not going to be sacked, see you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Like it's yeah. like obviously, if it had been sacked, <laughs> we would have done something. But because he wasn't, yeah. it's like he just there was nothing. And there's no rumours know. to talk about, is there? There's, there's no there's nothing concrete nothing. for us to evaluate. Nah. Apparently, nothing I was just really like happened. scanning through the WhatsApp group while we was recording, and apparently, a load of like mainstream journalists are all coming out with that the axe is about to fall on his head. Or again, I've only read a few WhatsApp messages, so I'm not sure how serious. But a few like. Top, like the Times top journalist expresses top journalists are all sort of just releasing that they think the axe is about to fall. Yeah, Ooh, it feels like that to me. Might. I thought they'd. I thought Saturday night. I thought we'd go Saturday night. Yeah, I really did. After that game, walking away, I just thought, no matter how um, you know they 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 <laughs> back him, it's got to stop. It's got. Yeah, I mean, to he's stop. just hanging about for a payoff now because any any respectable person, if the money wasn't involved would quit but if he quits he loses about six million quid so yeah. he's not going to do that no of course mm. as I say you know, he's a dead man walking isn't he he knows yeah well that's like apparently Tottenham asked Pochettino to quit and he said no so they sacked him and had to pay him 12 million yeah right no. <laughs> there you go but I th- I'd, I'd imagine that's the same with us that Emery ain't going to resign no, so then he won't resign why would no. he Ah, this is the first time I've actually enjoyed the A League over Arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I am. I'm, I'm literally not enjoying Arsenal at all at the moment. Yeah. Like I just that's, abject. That's, like I just go and I don't care. Yeah. It's yeah. Horrible, it? I'd hope you boys would be hard going. Like it'd be really hard going. But I'm at the point where I, I literally I've missed one away game in the last three years. I think in England. And not with <coughs> Norwich coming up next week, and it's kind of hard for me to get to because it's across the country, so no one can give me a lift. And I'm mm. just sitting here thinking, I might not go. I, I really might not. And it's like one of them that's really hard to get a ticket to. So people are like begging for him. And I'm just thinking, yeah. you can't be asked. Yeah, I was going to say, if you don't go, get some tickets. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> I, I, really, I really struggle with them. Because I've got mates from Norwich. So they're like, I'll oh, come down and we'll go out. But I was like, it's even worth the drive. 120 miles across fucking fields. <laughs> All right. How far is it? Two, uh, two and a half hours or something. About yeah. three, I think. But it's one of them, it's not that far in terms of miles, but it's just there's no yeah. roads. Like, Jeez, I wish I wish our bloody Australia was like that. Yeah. It's <laughs> one of those, it's a weird one, because you think it's sort of southeast, but it's actually further north than Birmingham, isn't it? It's um, it's a strange one on the map. You always think it's a little bit further south. But when you actually yeah. look, it's actually quite a long way up. But, but England, the whole way through, pretty much, is shit for going. It's OK going north and south. But going across the country, unless you're on the M3 going into oh, West, okay. there's, there's nothing. Like, literally, to go from east to west or west to east is just... It's always a good train ride there, though, isn't it? It's easy to get to train. I don't know. Uh, from Liverpool Street, yeah, yeah, but then I'd have to drive into London anyway. Right, so I've got, I'd have to do 50 miles into London. It's only a 90-mile drive, I think. So oh, right, OK. I forget you're not in London. Mm. There you go. Oh, well... Um, all right, well, I'm going to say good night. It's gone up. midnight. Yeah. Busy day tomorrow. So um, I'll get this file over to you, Tez, as soon as that's done. Oh, you send it over, mate. I can edit it and yeah. upload all that stuff. I'm so not that's going to cool. do anything. I'll just send it to you. Yeah, cheers, mate. Right, right. buddy. Catch cheers, guys. Cheers. See you, mate. Bye. So.